order at 601. So the first item is um, meeting to order is you need a motion to for um, to appoint a select board chair for the next year. I make a motion that uh, Chris uh, remain as a select board chair. He's done a tremendous job in that position. And if he's interested, uh, I would nominate him to continue. Second that motion. Okay, so you have a motion and a second to make Chris Jarvis the new chair. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like Chris is your chair, continues for a year. Ooh. All right, I am excited. <laughs> all that extra comp time for me so, so what i'm gonna do with all of it you, you wait until you have to buy this comp time out trees at some point that's right so. I'm not mo sure. told me today that he bought out all of his comp time and he bought a new truck oh, did he yeah. 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 Right. yeah well infinity times zero is still zero so that's right <laughs> <laughs> um so we will, uh, first on the agenda is, well, second on the agenda is uh, to approve the agenda for this evening. Is there anything that we need to add? Yeah, I, have a, I have a couple of amend. Yes. So yes. at 6.15, I promised uh, the Equity and Inclusion Committee, uh, Owen said five minutes for a quick update. Okay. Um, that's at 6.15. Uh, he got a hold of me after I'd already done the agenda. Um, okay. So that will be, I believe, Christy and Jerry. Um, <clears throat> deal with that. So okay. I have a couple of items to go, which we'll put under at the end of the meeting under other business. Um, I'm going to purchase a lawnmower and... Uh, Jan Dietrich sent me an a I dropped off an AARP grant application. So, but I'll do those under other business. Okay. And that's it. And you still have Ellie at 6 30 because of her work schedule. So you may have to come back to her when she joins if you're okay. You may have to bop around a little bit, but I wanted to uh, you know definitely go with her schedule. So that's yeah. it. Those are the updates my additions. I don't know if anybody has anything else. I think the only thing that it's, it's not <laughs> a big deal, but I think we, I was just thinking that we would do the, um, <clears throat> just adopt the rules, rules of procedure first. Sure. Whatever you want. Uh, I guess we could probably do it either way, but it just probably makes more sense to just adopt our policy of how we construct our meetings. And um, so we'll just move that ahead of the the Herald as the newspaper of record. Okay. Everybody's okay with that. Um, anything else? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so we, right now, uh, what we'll do is um, we do have, um, well, we can just do public comment. So right now with public comment, if, if there's anything that anybody would like to bring up that's not currently on the agenda, now's the time to do that. Paul? Yeah, I would like to just take a couple of moments to acknowledge the passing of Geneva Geico. Um, she was an extremely active person in the town of Bethel, her and her, her whole family. Uh, she was active in municipal government. Um, her husband had the used furniture store in town there and they, her whole family was very active in the town of Bethel. Um, she, uh, she and, and you know, and we always saw her at the select board meetings. She was always there in the front row, and she would voice her opinion, and she would uh, 
you know, ask questions. Uh, so I just, I just wanted to acknowledge her passing and she will be missed, although I'm sure she's sitting up there with Louie right now, uh, looking at us and making sure that we're taking care of business. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Um, and I just, <laughs> I had forgotten, Therese, you had sent me a couple messages. I just turned the group chat on so I can actually read that now. Um, so as we go, if there's any anybody that's not familiar to our the way we do things, um, I see you, Lenny. Hold on one second. It's just um, uh, during the Zoom calls, it's much easier to just either raise your hand through the chat end of things, or maybe just put in. You can just type into the chat saying, "Hey, you know, when you get a second, I'd like to say something." And then um, obviously, during, obviously during public comment, you know, we'll we'll kind of take those as they come, and then once we get inside the meeting. If somebody has um, a potential comment, then just put it in the chat. And then as soon as it's most appropriate, I'll, I'll make sure that I can call on you, OK? Um, then Lenny, you had your hand up. Two things. I'd like um, to, for the board, for the select board, to really think about bringing voting by ballot to the people so that we can vote on that, if that's something we might want in the future. I think it was a really good turnout this year. Um, I think it gave people more time to get introduced to the candidates, to the people on the select board. People did a lot more research that I've spoken to about the select board. I think it's really helpful if that is something that we could, you could think about and get that on an agenda to discuss maybe and to start bringing it to the people so they can vote on it. Um, I'd also, I've been thinking about this for a long time. We're, we talk about revitalization a lot. Has there ever been any thought given to a community center in downtown Bethel? I own one and operate it when we're not in COVID. So a community, I mean, so that the select board, the town has a community center. So you do. Yeah, we chose for revitalization reasons. And I feel like I don't want to take up a lot of time, but we chose to be a for-profit model to intentionally try to help revitalize the town and get more economic flow. We would have done better as a business to be a nonprofit, but we made a choice specifically to, to address some of the community needs that we've been hearing and working with through the, the revitalization efforts and, um, and intentionally also trying not to step on other businesses' toes. And that includes the town's rental of the town hall as a community space. So there are, there are things happening, I think, Maybe not in the most perfect ways, but. So maybe we could talk about that at a different time. Okay, that's all I wanted to put out there right now. Thank you. Yeah, I will comment. I just want to let Lenny know um, about voting by, if you want to, if residents want to change to Australian ballot, we actually would vote on it at town meeting next year and it wouldn't take effect till the following year. So it's a process, but that's mm -hmm. how it works. Sure. And Jesse has his hand up. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, um, everyone. I have a question from um, the bar. Actually, we're I'm, I have a meeting with the liquor inspector next week. Um, I just wanted to hear from the select board if there's anything that you all were looking for specifically from us about um, safety, or um, I'm talking about um, in reference to a um, some outdoor tables and things um, out front in the parking lot. And I know it's like a traffic situation also. So any input would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'm glad you got a hold of him, Jesse. That's great. Um, I What we need to know is they have to know what the, what the um, barrier is going to be made of. That has to be part of the application. And then I think it'll be, you know, I know one of the questions was we were kind of unsure about the size and down the side of the building. Whoops, I don't know. Oh, there you went. You moved all of a sudden. I was trying to make eye contact and you're now you're at the bottom. And so I know we are, um, that was one of the situations where we're trying to be sure narrow down the layout, which it sounds like um, Pat is going to help you with. And then, but I do know they need to know exactly what the booths are going to be made of. And I think the other topic may have been for like, like outside noise right now your current outside consumption permit is like noon to midnight and I, is that what where you were going to keep those hours i don't we just didn't know 
And I think, um, and Jesse, with ours, I know when we talked about it, and it might have been about a month ago, I can't remember, maybe two, um, when, when it came before us, is you know, like typically inside, um, inside um, establishments, it, it's pretty much cut and dry for us. You know, it's, it's um, you know, we kind of rubber stamp the blessing um, and it's, you know, it's all controlled by the state liquor um, board. So, but when you get into the outside consumption is when the town typically will look at it a little more. And I, I know, like Teresa had said, I think the main thing that we had talked about was the delineation of not so much the side and back of your, of your establishment, but the front. Um, Cause as we all know that, that, that kind of horseshoe area gets caught, you know, often used for individuals driving through there and people walking through there and, you know, and how that would be delineated safely um, as well as Teresa had brought up, you know, even though we don't technically have a noise ordinance, you know, there, there, there are always um, potential noise issues with having an outside establishment. And we had that um, at the tavern when they were doing their outside stuff, we ended up having to go through that process too um, there a couple of years ago. So I think those were the two main question, uh, questions that we had and Therese hit it on that there, so. Okay, thank you. And um, just to um, be sure, like, have you all ever received noise complaints from about the bar before? Has that ever been an issue? From yours, I don't believe so, Jesse. Um, but like we said, the only other one, at least that I can compare it to, is the is Tessie's Tavern when 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 we did the well, I can't remember how that flow went, but um, they were granted one, and we did have several noise complaints about theirs, uh, which then kind of became uh, troublesome for the board a little bit there for a period of time, but. I guess that we would be comparing you to just that one other one that I know of. Um, I don't know, Paul or Dave may have been around longer to, to know other ones, but, and, and we did approve your other two liquor licenses. Um, so it was just the outdoor consumption one that we were, that we had yeah. Yeah. more questions on. Yep. Yeah, Chris, with, with, with Tessie's, there were also concerns about lighting. Um, they, I think they ended up going before the DRB again, maybe to talk about lighting and okay. noise, um, both. I hadn't thought about that, about lighting. Jesse, is it pretty well lit out front? <clears throat> I guess I've never really thought too much about lighting as far as you're in the downtown core business area, but is it pretty well lit your parking lot? It's it's fine. There's the, with the street lights and our and the lights on the outside of the building. It's yeah. It's, I, I well, that's good though. Yeah. But you know, those, those were it really was just verifying okay. the size, the make, and then I know. Um, I think you had the same concern as people get in that habit of driving through, even though it is your property. <laughs> yeah. um, they they like to drive through that hoop, but it sounds like you pretty much had figured that out with what you're gonna. I did uh, notice that. Yes. For barriers, yeah, and, and when he called me, I told. <clears throat> Look, that's their property. People can come in and out on either side, but that's his place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, if you need me to come in, come down that day that he's gonna be there, just you know, shoot me an email yeah. or something or call me, Jesse. I'm happy to buzz down if I'm there. Thank you. And that might be the easiest thing because if Therese has any other questions, Jesse, maybe you guys can hash it out that time and then that way it doesn't have to go back and forth the board again, you know. All right, that sounds good. We'll talk. Okay. Seriously. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other? I can't tell Lenny if you have your hand up or if it's just resting on your chin. <laughs> okay. Well, at first I was like, I think his hand's up. And then I'm like, no, nope, I think he's resting on his chin. So resting on chin. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were moving a little bit. So I didn't know if that was <laughs> what you had there. So, all right. Um, so hearing no other public comment pieces. Doug doesn't have anything. He's been awful quiet for some time now. Ever since he retired, he got all quiet on us. So we will uh, move forward. Um, I do. Um, I'm, I am here if you need me to go now. Well, Ellie, if you are ready. Well, uh, no, we got you at 630, Ellie. So we, yeah. we have do one you, do... that kind of got scheduled in after 
Oh, okay. I I just see public comment and then I see appointments. Do you have another one uh, uh, appointment? Yeah, we have a quick appointment here at 6.15 for 15 minutes. Okay. All right. I can't see you this time because um, putting on the agenda thing on my computer, it says click here, but it doesn't let me get in there. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so I'm on by phone, but a lot of times if somebody sends me the link, then I can click on and see you guys. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm ready whenever you want me. <laughs> well, you know how we are. We're usually running behind, Nellie, so. Oh, okay. We'll try to get All you right. as punctual to 615 as possible. Oh, yeah, whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. good. Yeah, I'm, all yeah, sorry. I'm good. Okay. So our first appointment um, is one that um, Teresa had added to the schedule. So we have 615 for the Equity and Inclusion Committee. And I see both um, Christy and Jerry are here. And will you expect anybody else or just, just you two? Uh, Owen is here too, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the Brady Bunch. You keep looking for people on the screen and then they move and so, all right, we see y'all now. Okay, so uh, 6.15, um, the floor is yours. All right, thanks. Um, Jerry, you wanna start off and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, first off, thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Jerry Thomas, uh, he, him, and I live in Bethel, right on Church Street. Everybody, I'm Owen. You know me. He, him, Pisces. Hello. And I'm over in the Liliesville area on Brink Hill. And I am Christy Fry. She, her pronouns. I am on Abbott Road. And um, we're here today. I want to thank you for this time for getting us on the schedule. Um, for many of you, I've never met in person. So this is a treat. Thank you. Um, we're going to do very briefly, um, in the interest of time, to respect everyone's time, we thought we'd do um, a little bit of, uh, Jerry's going to talk to us about the purpose of our committee, and then I'm going to get into some of the work we've done already, and then we're going to get to the real thrust of it. Jerry's going to um, lead us in some, some conversation, very brief conversation. So with that, I'll, I'll give it to Jerry. Yep. So uh, yeah, the Committee on uh, Inclusion and Equity was established basically for the understanding, documenting, and remedying issues of inequality that happen in our community at Bethel. Um, you know, we're here to increase uh, civic engagement of marginalized people in our town, uh, while being more inclusive and educating and training select board members, community members, school board members, um, committee members, ourselves, uh, you never done learning. Uh, and on the, uh, you know, this is a volunteer committee and we are composed of all walks of people, ages, genders, economic backgrounds, and just here to basically make Bethel the amazing place that we know it is and can be. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Um, <laughs> You know, we haven't been hanging out together for very long, but you know, when I when we reviewed as as our, our subcommittee here, we reviewed some of the things we've done already. It's it's pretty exciting the framework that we have, and I think that's where we began, right? Like we wanted to create our own committee, like community agreement, so that we understood how we wanted to operate and how to be respectful of one another and demonstrate what we're hoping to share outwardly with the rest of our community. Um, so, you know, a framework and a governance framework, um, if you will. Um, we did a, pretty early on, we did a year in review for um, Black leaders in our community, and in particular, Jamison Davis, White River Valley School District, the anti-racist policy work uh, that's being done, uh, Kenya Lazuli for BIPOC Land Access and Opportunity Act, and Ashley Laporte um, doing work on police accountability work, just to, to highlight there a little bit. And the other things that we're doing now, we, we went in, we just we took the approach of subcommittees within our group, and um, um, but not death by subcommittee, I promise. Uh, 
We, so I'm going to just give you an overview of some of those subcommittees and, you know, again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into big detail because what we really want to do here is to open the floor up to hear from you and to collaborate a little bit as our first conversation. So subcommittee on a document review, like town document review forms, things like that. Um, website committee, I think some of our committee members have already participated in uh, at least one or two of these select board meetings, um, particularly around and um, our friend Thomas here as well, um, who's a, a regular to our, our committee, C and Lenny. Um, our town census and survey project, I think that more of like a benchmarking activity for us. Like you need to know your audience and who, you know, what, what do folks need? And let's not just start charging down the road without understanding, you know, who's, who's with us and, and what can we do? What, what are we all looking for? Um, and, we we also have um, this committee, this subcommittee. Our, we call ourselves the Anti-Racism Racism Education Subcommittee. And so that's who we are, Owen and Jerry and I. And, and so that's how we've approached um, the beginning. And this is to begin with, like who knows you know, what we unearth and what we as a community um, discover and how we'll move forward from that. But for right now, this is how we're approaching. Um, what you know what we feel are some some activities and some um, goals that maybe will give us some immediate impact and that's really important I think when you're a first when you're just beginning your existence and your your presence and your space in, in a community and with that I'm going to give it to Jerry for the for the big stuff here we're, we're here to hear from you and how we can um, collaborate with you and um, work with you and what we can provide you as well so Jerry um, I'll give it right back to you um, yeah, so one of the things that the committee is all about is, you know, having real tangible change that we can point to. And one of the things is ask, you know, what as educators, you know, what do we need, what do you need from us? Um, basically, you know, what do you need us to do and what does it look like? Um, something that we can get our hands in and make real tangible change to. And sort of in terms of like education. Sure, and and you know I'll just say to the um, <clears throat> the members, just feel free to jump in at any time. And um, I know um, you know at least on my end of things, and I'm only one fifth of the voice on the board. Is um, you know I guess what I most would like to see, or I'm curious to see, is is you know, where, you know, where are some of the deficiencies in our, our local community and, 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 you know, and once I guess establishing what those are, um, you know, how, how can we go about, you know, um, making that more positive. So, um, you know, I don't know exactly, um, you know, what, what issues we have in our community. Um, you know, it, you know, even though we only 2000 people in our community, it's hard to kind of know all 2000 people, you know, so it's, you know, you, you don't know everybody um, and there's people from all walks of life in our community. Um, so I guess my end, I'm just kind of really, I'm just curious to see what, what, what are the issues that our uh, citizens are having? And, and then I guess, you know, um, and then some recommendations from, from the committee on, you know, wh what do you feel would be the right steps to help addressing those deficiencies. So, um, I, you know, so I, I'm thinking baby steps here, getting into the, you know, dipping my feet, you know, toes into the pool here. So that's kind of what I can think of off the top of my head. So I'm sure the other members have um, different opinions, but that's mine. Paul? Yeah, Chris, I, th I think, that's part of it, but I think that the work that they're doing, just trying to, as you say, get to know your audience, um, find out what the topics are and establish the research. As an advisory committee, it's the committee's you know, duty or responsibility to establish the parameters of the situation and then bring the solutions to the select board for consideration. 
So I think getting to know your audience, getting to know what the situations are exactly uh, a little, you know, in some, in some detail, um, and then bringing that back to the board so that we can then look at policies and things like that that may have a positive impact on correcting some of these issues. Yeah, and you, you hit that right on the head there, Paul. I mean, I, I, no matter what our committee is, if you think about the different committees that we have in, in throughout the town, you know, the, the select board typically is not um, directly involved with that committee and telling it what, what it's doing and what, you know, um, I'll use an example like, um, you know, the recreation committee, for instance, you know, they meet, um, you know, there was a plan, kind of a formal informal plan that was kind of voted on years ago of what the citizens of the town want, want to see there. And, and now it's kind of up to them to figure out the pieces and the stages and, um, and then bring those before the board um, to get the opinion of the select board of, you know, we think this is the next step. What do you think? And, you know, this is what we might have to budget for, you know, type of thing. And I, I think Paul hit it right on the head there with, you know, this, this isn't really going to be something where the select board's going to, you know, give you a call and say, Jerry, this is what I want you to be doing. You know, this is more, um, you know, your committee um, coming to us and saying, this is what, you know, we've talked to our audience, like Paul said, and this is what we feel um, is, is what we need to focus on. So, Lindley. Um, so I, first off, appreciate that you guys are kind of coming to us and starting the conversation. I think that this is going to be an ongoing conversation and obviously won't, won't be solidified in just this meeting. Um, you know, some of it, especially given the, the broad scope of what you're asking, like, I personally would have liked to have had a little bit of time to think about it before just being put on the spot to know, oh, here's what I want to, here's what I want to ask the equity and inclusion committee. Um, I will say that I, I agree with what both Paul and Chris were saying. I also think that this is a slightly different scenario than the rec committee where it, that, that's sort of more infrastructure based. And what you guys are looking at is a little bit more culture based and culture is a lot harder to make decisions around and shift and understand. And, um, and so I think that it's, it's a bigger and a different beast. Um, and I think that it's not, it's not just one that we can, even the five of us as a board could individually answer and could answer even for a broader scope of community. Um, what I would personally love to see, and this, these are just like my off my, off the top of my head thoughts with only a few minutes to think was I'd like to see the, the sort of the background education that, um, and I, I want to clarify what I mean in a second, but like the background education that will put us as a board in a better spot to have more productive conversations with your group. And so what I'm trying to get at is um, there's a really big shift and it's happening within our country and it's happening at different places in different ways. And everybody's sort of at their own place with it. And in order to have a productive conversation as a group, as a bigger group, and then as a town, we all need to be coming in with at least some semblance of common knowledge, common terminology, common understanding. And um, Teresa, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit here, but uh, Teresa and I had a great conversation a couple months ago that um, really kind of got to the point of Therese realizing at the end of the conversation that she needed to do a little bit more of her own research and it couldn't really even be driven by me or what I was recommending. She had to go and kind of figure it out on her own. And so I think maybe that's a starting place for how the EIC can help this board is kind of giving some reference material to read or giving some, some basis that we can start to come to a common place of knowledge so then we can start having the conversations and actually give you a little more input as to like, here's the direction as a board, we feel like our knowledge is, you know, we're missing this area or we need a little bit more understanding, you know, this, this piece of it just didn't make any sense or how does this affect our lives? I, I think we're, we're kind of, sorry to throw all five of us under the bus, but we're at a little bit of a deficit maybe from where the rest of the EIC is coming from of, knowledge and common foundation and that we'll have more productive conversations if we kind of 
all get to that same place and then try to figure out what our next steps are. Is that, that was a lot of thoughts. Well, Lindley definitely thought a lot more in her couple of minutes than I had, so. And Gene has his hand up. Yeah. Uh, and and it's a there is a question I have. Uh, it's in part of a personnel policy question, but it, uh, I'd like to extend it not just to personnel, paid staff, but all of the volunteers, committee members, and so on. What if any uh, quote, and this may be kind of what Lindy was saying too. Awareness training is there. Uh, related to a whole range of inclusion questions, uh, not the least of which are sexual harassment and, uh, but, but how we deal with one another culturally as well. I just, is there anything, should there be anything? And maybe the question for EIC to, to look into what is there and what resources should could be available not well especially to to employees but also to people like ourselves who are volunteers and and serving on boards and committees of the community i think that i mean so far gene there's not i mean obviously we address you know, several things, you know, sexual harassment, different things in our personnel policy, yes. And I've been looking to see, I've kind of been waiting, assuming that maybe the LCT, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns might come out with some sort of, you know, employee-based training. And um, so, and I haven't seen it yet, but I'm waiting, but, you know, uh, Lindley is right. And, and you didn't throw me under the bus. So that's fine. It's certainly having my own questions. And I, and I think I'd had this conversation with Owen via an email is, just, you know, reading, you know, I, I certainly don't understand all the issues and the terminology. And, and so I started reading this, this great book. And then I have questions like I don't reading about intersectionality was, you know, just this like, what a, an amazing, you know, concept. And I'm trying to understand, but who do I ask questions, you know, I need someone that I can say, okay, well, you can talk to someone about, you know, back and forth and truly understanding it. And I think I'd said to Owen once and Owen kind of laughed because I said, well, I think of everybody as a group, everybody's a resident. And so, you know, I, I think of any decision or thing that I'm going to make or ask the select board to make, we think about the residents, you know, as a group. And one of the things that had come out during town plan that Lenny had, you know, are we making sure that we're disseminating information and, you know, I'm using every source available to me, but is there something that I'm missing? Is there um, a better way? Should we be, you know, should some of the information be in different languages? Should there, you know, I mean, there's so many questions that I have and, and about certain things to make sure that we're doing the best job that we can do. And I look forward to seeing, you know, from the edge, from an education standpoint, talking about some of these topics or certainly putting them in, I want to say bite-sized pieces, but an understandable, you know, making these big terms in a more smaller, understandable, you know, way. Um, the other thing I look forward to, and I haven't seen yet, and is there was uh, one of the subcommittees was going to be working on like an outline or just some ideas, maybe more of a list of ideas for things about policies and forms that, you know, I'm, I'm constantly updating and writing policy. So it's handy for me to um, have maybe just a little toolkit of things to kind of keep in mind when I'm writing um, and taking it to the board. So I, I think it's going to be you guys coming and us being able to ask questions and sound stupid and you know <laughs> just say, say, hey, I don't know. Can you help me? I'm not above that I'm saying. I and, and, <laughs> and I think really, you know, it just kind of the um, sum it all up. I mean, we're, we're really, you know, as a board, we're, you know, we're really leave, leaving it up to, you know, the committee's expertise and, uh, you know, along with, you know, like Lindley and others were saying, like, who is our audience? Taking our audience, learning from them, and then applying your expertise to how do we make things better? You know, what do we do differently? 
Um, how can you educate, you know, us and others and, and, um, you know, it, it really, you know, the balls in your court, really, it, you know, to kind of go with it and check in with the board. Usually, usually our committees, they, you know, check in with the board a couple of times a year. Um, we get to um, go back and forth on, you know, what are you working on? Do you need any help? Um, or, or sometimes we set deadlines if there's something that needs a deadline, but you know, usually it's just that flow of information back and forth and um, hitting some special dates. Therese could probably keep you up to speed on some of the important dates of the year. Like if something's going to go before voting, we have to have it in by a certain date or, you know, those types of things. But um, the most important yes. thing is that you would that we want to do better. We want to understand. We want to know more. So I think this is kind of a great conversation because you, you know, we just, we want to make sure we're doing right by everybody. And I think that it's good that we're open to it. And I think that's the most important takeaway. I know I hope for you is, is that you realize is we want to be partners. One, yeah. idea, one idea that comes to mind as a person who join, who comes to different meetings is that uh, the select board occasionally comes and sits in on a meeting of the EIC, attend a meeting, ask questions in one of those meetings, be a part of those meetings because it is equity and inclusion. So it also includes you, <laughs> you know, it includes anybody can come to that forum. I think it's, if, if you're talking about education, I think it's a good way to get some information as well. Yeah, for the select board, they could, you know, obviously we'd have to warn it as a board meeting. So, um, but if an individual wanted to go, we're certainly like right now, we are going to talk about later tonight about liaisons, maybe select board yeah. picking a committee. I think Lindley certainly, I know Lindley's been attending yours and, and um, so, but that's, you know, that's something to think about too, Thomas. And I'm, I'm going to make the, make a note of that too, is maybe doing a, another meeting, but outside the select board schedule to a joint meeting. And I think too, once you have the education thing, uh, like even just as a way to you want to start it or try it out, that certainly is, you know, we to make you to have this like have them come back and do something together so they can do it as a exercise would be good. So I'll make a note of that. Just to follow up on something Therese was saying earlier, um, I also have been a little bit shocked that nothing has come down from the LCT, and that's um, so for the those that don't know, that's kind of our our municipal oversight and they kind of help guide us and, and give us information and do informational trainings and all sorts of different things. And I've sort of been surprised and I wonder, you know, while Therese was saying that, what went through my head is like, what if this group put together or put together a panel of, of experts who could do that kind of training and almost preempt the, the bigger statewide thing, but do it for Bethel and, you know, see, see how it goes. I think that it's exactly, this is such a process. It's not like you can give us one, one reference or one thing, and it's gonna, we're we're all gonna understand and and have whole new practices in, of existence. It's such a process that, you know, we just have to take this into it, and like we're doing it constantly with the school, and it's just you know, it's such a it's such a learning. You've got to do this deep dive and then implement practice within to your within your own life in the ways that make sense for you. And so getting us started on that learning process, I think is, is really pretty key. And maybe that's where like, like Chris was saying, you know, it's come to us with something, come to us with here are some starting places, even if it's a handful of different starting places and we just go from there on our own. I will reach out to VLCT though, to see if they are working on something Then I can send that information to Christy and Jerry and Owen and say, hey, I found, you know, this is what they're working on. So I will send them an email and mm -hmm. see if they have anything in the works or not. You right. know, maybe just, you know, see if they do, I'll, I'll um, send you guys the information if that's okay. And uh, one, just, I uh, think, can I say a thing? Hi. Sure, yep. Um, I know we have, I know time. We gotta, we gotta wrap this up. And I apologize, I personally apologize, Lindley. That was my bad. I emailed Therese late in the game about us being on the agenda, but we actually decided as a, as a team that we wanted to be on the agenda at our last EIC meeting. So that's 100% my bad for not giving more warning. I just want to own that. Um, it's been a busy couple days, um, but um, one of the things that we've just started talking about is to kind of bring in 
um, maybe guest speakers um, to our EIC. And that could be folks like Susanna Davis, who is the racial and equity director at the state level for Vermont. Um, we've talked about bringing in some of the leaders of the various NAACPs in our state, just to really like 20 minutes at our meetings, be like, this is who I am. <laughs> this is what I do. This is what I can offer to your town um, professionally, right? And also then we can say, you know, here's some questions that our town has. Maybe they could do a training for us. So it's not all just our labor doing that kind of stuff, right? Um, because we all have other jobs and things as well. And so really thinking about tapping into the wealth of resources that already are here and lifting some of those folks up and bringing them into our town so that they are also aware, like, oh, Bethel's doing some cool stuff, right? Because I think this is, this is, whether we know it or not, we're doing something that other towns our size, and I know Bethel gets thought of as sort of like a classic Vermont town, you know, like has been through all these things and, you know, has kind of up and down sort of like economically, and there's many towns that fit our demographic. And so I think it could be really cool for some of these statewide leaders to see that our town is taking these initiatives, even though we're such a small town. You know what I mean? So our hope is that we can uplift the town on a statewide level as well. Um, so it'd be great to do that in partnership, more close partnership. Well, and, and to sort of go off of what Owen was just saying, because I, I really like that you're thinking of having some of these um, maybe bigger leaders coming to your meetings, but maybe it's, it's then, you know, from there, the town could sponsor something at the town hall or a discussion group or things that then, or even a training for town employees and municipal members, not just the select board, but, you know, commit other committee members, but like really sort of think outside of how do we, how do we just get it from your group, our group, these little pockets and maybe do something that's a little more substantial. And I know those are, those are lofty goals and it's all, you know, in parts and pieces and, and part of the process. But I think what you're saying of like bringing those leaders in, if we're already bringing them in with some next steps of like, hey, we'd love to have you come back. We'd love to hire you to do a training and it would be for municipal employees or some, you know, but coming into it with some of those ideas at the ready, I think would be really helpful. And, and maybe it's chatting more directly with Therese about what that would look like, um, you know, that kind of thing. So. So unless we have any other like major questions that need to get ironed out, because um, we do have, unfortunately, you know, we do have um, the agenda to stay on track with and poor Ellie's on the phone. Um, but um, uh, what I'd like to do, and typically we, like I was saying, typically our committee come in, well, I don't know, a couple times a year to meet with us. Um, not all committees, but some of them. So why don't we try to set up like a quarterly meeting where, you know, that gives, cause you guys, you know, that gives, uh, that gives the committee uh, a couple of meetings to, to go through um, information before coming to the select board. So like I was thinking the next quarter would be like June. Is that about the time frame, Therese? So why don't we uh, make sure that we get you on the select board um, agenda for June and that will give the committee um, some time to um, to start working on um, some of these items and 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 then just you know we'll have a conversation in June on you know where you're at or what you might need from us or you know I'll email Christy and Owen and Jerry um, with the select board meeting dates in June and then you guys can pick whatever works best for you if that's okay because yeah, if we did june then you could do again like you know september and then the end of the year you know so that kind of hits all the quarters pretty good yeah and obviously if you have something in between you can just let me know and we'll get you on an agenda so as the new kid on the block there will be occasions when i will ask a question of uh what it means to be a select board member uh as you know, before I've had all that training and understand all the ins and outs. One of the questions that I have is how do open meeting laws impact if three of us show up at an EIC meeting? Uh, because the uh, we're 
we're not supposed to, we were not permitted to engage in town business uh, mm -hmm. where there is a, more than a majority present. So I, it's a question uh, and at some point uh, put a tickler on it or, or however mm -hmm. we want to deal with it, but that's something to think about for me. If I'll try to, um, Gene, and I know we, just the way the appointments ran tonight and stuff, and I know we'll do the kind of motion to readopt the rules and procedures of select board, but we can also um, do a little education in regards to the open meeting laws at that time. Um, but, you know, rule of thumb usually is, you know, that you can't have a quorum. So, um, so that for our board would mean no more than two of us. Um, to, it's safe to say, I mean, not to say that we're going to push an agenda, but that's just the perception. So um, usually two, uh, two or less board members um, to attend uh, any type of formal event. Um, and then, you know, when, when speaking as a group, typically it's, you know, uh, replying to the individual. So let's say an email, you know, that has 10 attachments to it, you know, we can't, we can't reply all, uh, but we can, we can have a discussion individually with somebody uh, because if we do reply all, or uh, let's say it was a Facebook post and we all decided to comment on a Facebook post, then that becomes a perception of us having some sort of quorum into a decision of a discussion. So um, usually it's, you know, in one, you know, reach out individually or two, you know, if, um, you know, if somebody wanted to go to the EIC meeting, you know, I would recommend it either be, you know, individually, um, you know, either pick different times to go or just have, you know, two or less people. Um, but we'll, we'll definitely, it's part of the education process, Gene, and we've all been through it. So you know, wait until I, we get the big functions. Yeah, like, just board festival and those ones to get around. Yeah, I just want to make sure that three of us don't show up by accident at the same time yeah. when we're, yeah, that's all. I love that yeah. you're talking about showing up to our, our committee. This is awesome. We love it. Hey, and I just want to say thank you. It's great to have the space with you. Um, nice to meet you. Yeah, even if it's uh, in Zoom boxes, I appreciate it. And um, uh, I don't know, Jerry or Owen would like to say anything else, but I just want to say thank you. Congrats to Gene and Chris. Uh, I guess you've had some uh, favorable election results. So just want to name that as well. Yeah, my, my opponent carried out a pretty vicious um, campaign. Um, he was, he was a tough, he, she was a tough one. So <laughs> I, I almost pulled off the school to be on the school board over in Royalton. Though. <laughs> I had a couple of votes for in Royalton. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thank you for joining us. You guys more, you know, everybody's more than welcome to stick around. Um, you know, usually it's a ball of fire going through all these um, different uh, agenda items, especially the first couple after town meeting day, because there's lots of uh, just formality, uh, you know, motions to, you know, readopt, uh, you know, something from last year. Um, but more and more than welcome to stay on board. And um, if Ellie is still there. I am. I am here. We will go to Ellie. Ellie's uh, Ellie's on the recreation committee. For anybody that doesn't know Ellie, um, okay. So, and yeah. Ellie is uh, here this evening to request to hold coin drop, which I believe yeah. Memorial Day weekend. Does that sound right? Yeah. Um, so uh, I have to report that we are feeling really good that we have a wonderful increase in people using the recreation center. But we have found that there are some issues um, concerning use of the recreation center that we knew, need new signage. We need um, um, something put up and new signage is needed because we have some issues like um, a lot of dog waste being um, there in, at the center, people not taking care of it, um, um, animals not on their leash, uh, a leash um people lottering like sitting in cars um 
uh, smoking cigarettes and then um, putting the their ends of their cigarettes out the window, um, so trashing up the place. So we feel that we need a really good um, signage um, that will address these issues and, and state the rules and welcome to our recreation center, but these are the rules we'd really like um, people to um, adhere to it so that we all can enjoy the recreation center. And um, um, Deidre has nicely been um, talking to uh, rural signage in Randolph and coming up with a, a approximate cost. And we feel that um, doing a coin drop May May 20, Saturday May 29th will will um, um, be so that we can be able to to have a wonderful sign. Um, stating a welcome and stating um, procedures or, or rules that people can can um, make it so everybody's enjoying the center. Sure, yeah, and I, I think that's you know is kind of actually you know kind of a it, it's good to have talks about that. Lots of people are using the recreation area. You know, I mean, years ago, we were kind of figuring out how would we get more people there and, you know, yeah. well, these are going to, it's, you know, it's kind of like going to be one of those ongoing conversations, you know, like, you know, where do we come up with more parking and, you know, like, those are the type of discussions that are exciting because we know that we're getting high usage out of something. So, um, you know, even though, um, you know, we don't want to see trash and, and uh, things like that, but um, at least we know people are using it. So now we just have to deal with the... Um, the not so nice piece of it, which is, you know, people being uh, responsible and cleaning up after themselves. So um, yeah. do you have any, um, do you have any estimated costs, Ellie, on? Yes, we have an estimated might cost. Run of, and, yes, we do have an estimated cost of $1,000. So 1000 okay. Yes, and our coin drop last year that we did in July, we, um, we we took in 900 so we feel that if we do you know that that we can um it's approximate you know it's uh, it's uh, something that we feel that we can um um do this uh fundraiser and be able to do the signage soon okay we have, we were putting up pet sign, you know, pet way signs over there, which people were on tearing down and things. So I did talk, have Dietrich talk to Oscar. So we were going to, if we, if um, we get names or even without Oscar, but if we get names, um, Ellie, we're going to send people a letter along with a copy of the um, dog ordinance that tells people they're responsible for cleaning up after their waste and, okay. and um, which would be good. So my question is really, Chris is, um, the the recreation committee has about eight thousand dollars that they need to pay back to the capital fund. So if so, if the coin drop is going to the sign, I just want to let you guys know it's not going to pay back that. So um, right. and also too, there's uh, Ellie dropped off a signed copy of the application. I know there's not a signed one in your packet, but there mm -hmm. is a signed one now at the office. So um, just so you guys know that. But I also wanted to be clear about that. So if people thought the money for the coin drop was going to pay back that, it's not. They're mm -hmm. obviously earmarking it for a sign. So would there would there be any possibility of you know maybe getting either the whole thing or pieces of it donated by different individuals that do a craft like that, like you know printing or you know a woodworker that you know. We do have someone. We do have someone on the committee that is um, um, has volunteered. She, um, they have stone posts that um, they're donating to um, the committee to the um, Bethel for for the sign. And we do have um, we do have uh, a piece of grant some granite from some steps near the river that we want to use for. Um, stones and and a design with the that stone that granite stone 
and and the stone post that we were um, this um, committee member is donating to to us. The other thing too is once we um, see you know get the estimate for the sign for the rule sign. Um, and we look at what the final budget is for parks and rec and the pool for the end of June, you know, we may be able to, there may, I'm not saying there will be, there may be some money in the budget that would help reduce the thousand out of, you know, so maybe any money for the coin drop didn't all have to go to the sign. So we can kind yeah. of certainly be open-minded about that. I did see the signage and I thought that the rec committee did a great job um, with their wording and it's very inclusive, you know, definitely lays it all out. So I thought it was great. Oh, and just so you so you also know that we are planning a a, a major letter donation campaign, um, and um, and we are um, planning a, a a big silent auction instead of a raffle. We might not do a raffle, but we'll we want to do a major with um, with some some prizes that are are um, big prizes. Um, and those those two major fundraisers, the silent auction and the donation letter, those are specifically that we are planning that will go for the for the for the eight thousand. That's uh, yeah. I know. I talked to Dietrich about that. You guys had mentioned that about a letter writing campaign to for donations. I think that's a great idea. And then, you know, you could probably once we get a head count, we'll be able to do postage and and envelopes and stuff maybe out of that fund but we can we, then we can put the money back in once you do it but i think the letter writing um campaign is a great idea it certainly was profitable for the conservation commission when they were looking for donations for the billadoo property so i think that's a great idea ellie and Thank you. and on a second note there ellie when when yeah. was a good time to have the um, recreation committee um, come formally before the board just to catch up with us in regards to you know where we're at with the recreation plan what our next steps are there and what you know what that proposed map okay, um, like. yeah well um, I would say the end of April or the one the end of April um, would be good because then we'd be have more of our plan together. Well, maybe I just would... just let um, just let Therese know what date would. I mean, it's nothing okay. to rush here next month. We're just right. Just just so that we can keep the conversation maybe, going on where okay. we're at. Okay, or we maybe our may, or maybe the May tenth May tenth um, select board meeting. So maybe in May we we can get Ellie in the yeah committee. Okay. Right. Would be good, yeah, because it's been. I, I think the last time we kind of checked in together, it was in the fall. Formally, yeah, as we say, September or something. Yeah, yeah, or maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some of the information that's not on the coin drop request is that obviously it's on May 29th. It's from 8 a.m. to noon um, mm -hmm. because the recreation committee is a committee for the town of Bethel. Our insurance is in play here, and yep. Ellie said that she they they get their um, signage from the fire department. And I did reach out to the state of Vermont just to make sure that the governor is approving coin drops. And he said, coin drops are okay. Obviously, you know, we still, um, depending on the situation and end of May, uh, the coin drop, you know, whoever's at the coin drop may be having to, you know, wear masks and um, right. no one under age of 16 can be out there. And no, but uh, Ellie received all the rules and she's aware of them. She's done it before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And we did. We wore masks and and shields and stuff and wore gloves and did all that um, last July. Excellent. Well, okay. and hopefully you know things relax a little more by then, but we'll find out. So, um, yeah. but I just want to let you know that's the time frame and and between the white church and the brick church and um, the yep. you know the standard process for or that people usually do coin drops. Sounds good. So I guess all I would need is a motion to approve the Recreation Committee's coin drop for May 29th, 2021. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 
Just remember, Lindley, now that Mo's not here, I'm leaning on you on these motions, so. I made a yeah. motion, but it didn't pick me up. No. <laughs> the there, is a, there is a little moment of silence there. Yeah. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, so we're all good there. Thank you, Ellie. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay. All right, so now we will circle back to, um, so once a year we, we adopt the rules and procedures for the select board here. Um, so, and in, in kind of looking through that, and, you know, I know often we, we do a motion, we make a second and we'll vote on it. Um, I mean, reading through our own procedures, we don't necessarily have to um, second items. Um, that's not um, necessary. Uh, but typically that's kind of been the way we've done it in the past. Um, I know as, as chair, what I like to do typically is, um, is to run the meeting and, uh, but not vote in the meeting unless it's casting a, uh, a tie. So, you know, usually as long as we get a, a motion and a second and one of the other two board members raises their hand in favor of the item, then it passes. Um, and at, at any time, if we are, if we are going through an item, you know, um, a select board member can always request a roll call vote if they um, feel it is needed. Um, and, and just for Gene, you know, pretty much everything that we do when it comes to uh, making a motion, you know, I, you know, um, sometimes the motions can be lengthy. Um, sometimes they can very be small. Um, probably I would say 50% of the time I read the motion off ahead of time. And then it's just a matter of, you could just say, you know, I want to move the motion. Um, and then it is carried through. Um, sometimes we just have to make sure that Lisa has all the information because we talk very fast and, but, um, she often has it on the agenda. Uh, so she can kind of in some way, she's has has it ahead of time, um, and um, and then you know just as far as the meeting goes, you know we just have to remember that you know this a select board meeting is a meeting of the select board, and the public is more than welcome to attend the meeting, but we have to kind of think of it as it's really a meeting of uh, the five board members and Therese. Um, and, and we do allow, um, the public to comment at, at times that, um, um, that are right. Um, but we, you know, sometimes we just have to remember that, you know, you don't have to wait for, I know on the zoom, it's kind of difficult, but you know, in normal, we don't have to wait for, you know, whatever. Lindley doesn't have to raise her hand to talk. Um, I know on zoom call, it's kind of like we're all back at school, but, uh, you know, everybody on this board carries equal weight. So, um, and you'll, you'll find often that I'm not, typically I won't talk on an item until at least a couple of people have talked. Um, don't really want to interject my thoughts into it too much. So, um, and then I, you know, like we had talked about um, when Gene, when you were a candidate and, and Wayne there that, you know, it's really, it's, it's about, you know, what do we feel the, citizens of Bethel as a whole, um, you know, into our decisions and, you know, try to leave our biases out of it and, um, and uh, you know, go from there. But, but definitely, I think, you know, in order to have a good constructive discussion that, you know, don't be afraid to raise your opinions at any time or, or maybe not so much opinions, but opinions of, you know, other citizens that have talked to you about um, a piece. Um, I will say that this board I can't remember a time where we have not been able to move forward with an item. Um, we often find common ground quickly. Um, so it's about, you know, trying to find that common ground on these issues, you know, as fast as we can. And um, the other thing, uh, Gene, that we typically do, if you see it on the agenda, then uh, be prepared to act on the agenda items. Um, some boards in the past, uh, I know when I started on with Mo, there was like this leftover graveyard of 
things that have been brought into the select board that just never went anywhere. Um, so often we like to, I mean, we don't want to just make motions and act on things just to act on them, but we're normally if we're, if Teresa says something on here, like I'll use, for example, the, uh, the social media policy, we've, we've had a couple of discussions about this policy already that's gone back and forth. Um, and we're not ready to make a motion on that tonight, but we're continuing to have that discussion point on that item. But, you know, my guess is probably at the next select board meeting or the one after that, you know, we'll have it on there as a motion to do something with it. Um, and we just hope that everybody, you know, has done their homework and uh, is prepared to make a, a vote on it. So, um, and then, you know, I was new at one point too. So at any time, Gene, if you, don't understand something, just ask us, you know. Um, and then you get unlimited comp time like the rest of us, Gene. So just think of it that way. So uh, if anybody has any issues or about the Bethel Select Board Rules and Procedures, um, you know, uh, I would assume that everybody has read through it by now. There's 13 bullet points. Um, if nobody has any questions in regards to it, I would be open to hear a motion to readopt the rules and procedures for the Bethel Select Board. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And we have, um, and then usually the first couple of meetings after town meeting day, uh, we'll spend, you know, a fair amount of our board meetings um, going through kind of re-adoptions for the yearly, you know, things like um, tonight we have the town herald as the newspaper of record. Um, you probably saw on there that, you know, some of the other positions were not ready to go forward tonight because we're still probably waiting to hear back from those individuals if they're good to go or not, um, which Therese will get those on the next meeting or two. So um, so the next one tonight is is uh, to make a motion to name the Herald as the newspaper of record. Um, I know the Herald <clears throat> has been the newspaper of record here for as long as I've been on the board. So unless anybody has a, re um, a difference of opinion on that, I would just entertain a motion to name the Herald as the newspaper of record. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Lisa, you're safe for one more year. But, but Paul's not done with you yet. So, <laughs> all right. And uh, the next is to um, typically whenever we're doing any type of posting for our meeting notices, um, we have to designate um, three areas um, for the public. So um, what we have been doing is the town clerk's office, the town manager's office, and the Bethel library as the um, physical locations. We often will put it on social media platforms and things like that, but you have to have at least three physical locations where an individual can come and look and see the agenda items. And the, the clerk's office and the manager's office are at the same physical location. But they're technically two offices though. They, uh, well, I It's I weird, that's just the I way just... they do it. <laughs> it is weird and the, the funny yeah. thing is too, I actually had this conversation with the office the other day is we don't really have a lot of options as other places to post yeah. things. If we do, if you do a bond vote, you have to post it in five places. So when we've done it in five places, we've done these three and then I think we got it at the central market. Um, we asked the post office or if right. the post office won't allow us, we'll do, you know, we'll do the bank, but it's hard. There's not that many spots in, you know, Bethel for us to physically post. So we obviously, we also do our website and, and um, you know, any other, if we have some outreach in particular, um, we might do right. Facebook from Porch Forum and stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny, Gene. I was surprised too, I guess. I was like, why? 
both, but <laughs> we had a whole conversation about where could we make another spot and we could yeah. come up with one. So well, I think um, the post office is a good a good place to you have to get permission post. every time. And so yeah. we can't guarantee yeah. it. and we need we, they require us to pick three spots. So we could do it as a fourth, but we have to be able to say we can put it there every time. And if right. she's got something else posted there, we can't guarantee that. But we do do it for bond votes, of course. And of course, I mean, anybody knows if they want, just call us. We'll tell you whatever you want to know and right. uh, on the website and everything else. But th that's how they've been there. And um, uh, I had the exact same conversation last week, Gene. <laughs> a, a public kiosk type thing outside the town hall might also be a place where we could do that. So you don't have to physically go into the town hall in order to right. see. Yep. But that's another... Yeah, and now we just post the uh, the dates there because there's not enough. The letters kind of move around. If yeah, if there was a back right. side to it, maybe you could. If people would get out and go look at it, you could. Um, well, I'm I'm thinking of Randolph where they have that three sided uh, yep. bulletin board mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so if there were that kind of a uh, at the post office or at the post at the town hall, that might. Sure serve as that kind of a thing anyway uh, just a, i'm thinking out loud no that's a good, a good thought just, just thinking of it does the does the bulletin board at the town hall would that be able to if you put the agenda item in that would that be able to hold that I, I, is it waterproof i can't remember if that well, you, you can't because no, I don't think it is completely. And, and I don't have space because if you read it when you, you know, the yeah. author, all those letters. So currently, yeah, that, gotcha. I think Jean, that thing is aging. So I think Jean yeah. has a great point that if we ever redid it, then we could put maybe one side where we change the letters, but another where we post stuff. I think it's a mm. great, you know, it's a good idea. Yeah. And we I know we, I know we list it. that, don't say the meeting time and, mm -hmm. And date, but it won't give you the agenda item. So right, right now it just says you know you can call the office, but and we can't post on a bulletin board at the town hall because it's not unlocked. So it's not like it's you know you have access to it. So right. So for now, this is what we're stuck with, but we um we overcome it by putting stuff in the you know Facebook front porch forum and website. So, but I agree with you. I think in the future when we go to replace that thing, we gotta we can definitely make it better. So unless um, I hear different, I would just entertain a motion to designate the town clerk's office, the town manager's office and the Bethel Public Library as the physical locations to post meeting notices. I'll move. Is your microphone not working, Lindley? I don't know, it's working half the time. We're going to have to go to hand signals. It just doesn't like me when I try to make a motion. <laughs> it's Mo. He's, he's it's Mo. He's in your computer. Of course he would. <laughs> you have to cough first to get Zoom's attention. Oh. Yeah. Well, I would second it if nobody else did. <laughs> I, I, so who, who made the motion? I had Dave and Lindley. I had Dave motioned it. Lindley seconded. Got it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. And then um, another thing that we do when it comes to AP and payroll, Gene, is um, Paul usually goes in ahead of time and, and goes through. Um, when we meet in person, um, we often have um, the AP and payroll um, signatures to do. Um, we have been doing, um, Paul goes in ahead of time and kind of looks through it to make sure that it's kosher. And then and then we put our signatures on it at board meeting time. So, um, so the next one is just to authorize the board members, to authorize a board member, which I'm assuming is that gonna be Paul? Or are you willing to- That works for me. Does anybody else want to beat Paul to the AP and payroll <laughs> pieces? <laughs> okay, so the motion would be to authorize Paul to, to sign the AP and payroll on behalf of the town and 
the other piece why we do that, Gene, is we often we can't wait uh, two weeks to sign certain documents. Um, you know, it might be for paychecks or you know whatnot. So we have to get those out and. And the board, the board will go through, you have the opportunity to go through and look at it before each board meeting um, and sign off, so. So the motion is for Paul to sign on behalf of the town. Dave has made the motion. Second. We'll give it to Gene, get, put Gene in the record, Gene. Um, second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Dave, Dave, is that your attempt to be in solidarity with my inability to be caught on <laughs> the voice? And, and then, um, as we know, there was a lister position that was not filled on town meeting day, and we had pretty much anticipated that happening. So, um, so the procedure now is that um, is to go and advertise for the position and it's kind of just like hiring somebody. So we'll get applications, um, hopefully, and then, um, and then they come, uh, be, usually the listers will look at those um, and then we will make a decision on the board to appoint somebody, but the appointment would only be for this season. So it's a three year, um, it's a three year lister position. So what would happen is if we do find a candidate that's qualified, um, we would make an appointment for just this year until next town meeting day. And then on town meeting day, that position would open up. Uh, so somebody would run to fulfill the end two years of that position. Um, exactly. And I think we, we, I think we should do that one first and hold off on the assessor. We all know that G, that Louise got elected and that Louise is going to retire before in the June, I think, yeah. before her term expires. So then I think if we just, we should do this, this lister position now, then, and we'll have, I think that's going to give us an idea of what we're, you know, because they have to be a Bethel resident. And of course the listers would like to see them maybe with some sort of insurance, construction, computer, some sort of background that would help them with the position. Right. And then, um, so I think we should do that now. And then if we can get that one filled, that'd be great. Then we know Louise is, our, is going to retire, I think in June. So we would be looking for a third lister again then. And if that doesn't, you know, we still have the money in the budget for an assessor. So I think we should just basically take this one step at a time and see what we can find, you know, if we can find a candidate um, and before we have to do anything about the assessor position, because that's still money in the budget that, you know, if we can't find Lister, we're going to have to move with the assessor option. So or, or we may do both. Uh, frankly, we may end up having to hire someone else for that. But I think we do this in baby steps. Let's see what we can get for if we get a bunch of applicants, then you know that when Louise retires, you may have somebody who could fill that position, you know, and I think it's June. So mm. okay. let's, let's throw it out there and see what we get. So just need a motion to approve. Well, I don't think, yeah, sorry. I shouldn't have made that. We don't need a motion. I'm sorry. Um, I just want, I'm, I got carried away typing motion, I think. You don't need one. I, we'll advertise for it. We'll see what we okay, get. Okay, so we're good to go with it then. Yeah, that was the only position that did not get filled on, okay. on meeting day. Because so if we, Paul, if Paul got the write-in for um, trustee of public funds, so you had no other open seat. So yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put motion there. Just to let you know, as an FYI, I'll, I'll put the advertisement out and then a point later we could make this quick tonight we could just make a motion in second we'll have doug fulfill that for three years that, that's, that's right <laughs> wait a minute i have a spot Maybe for the next time. year <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to plant the seed that we at some point in time need to look at um advertising for an emergency shelter coordinator uh, we've that's been going cool. without one for quite a long time and this is going to come around to be an issue at some point in time. So um, I just want to plant that seed. I'll put together a you know, job. We have a job description, I believe. Um, but that's something we need to think about down the road here. That's yeah, right. absolutely. Teppen, Teppen moved, right? So because Teppen was the last one, I think, right? Yeah. 
So yeah. I'll put it at this. I can put out two ads and I'll do the emergency. I, I think Doug would be in a, a good one in that spot. He would be excellent. Yeah. So we'll do emergency shelter coordinator, the lister. And um, I'm still looking for planning commission members because I just lost Jean. So um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> can Jean still participate, but as a non voting member? Exactly. Yep. He could be a non voting. Yeah. He, he could be the, the select board uh, liaison, yep. as it were. Yeah. He's an <laughs> ex officio now, but um, so anyways, yeah. but yes, yeah, so, okay. I'll make sure I get those ads out then. The problem there, Paul, is we is the voting members. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's not enough voting members. So. And don't forget, I'm trying to get- That's the problem there. So right now we're down to myself and Kyle Cartwright and who has basically Zoe's his own alternate, right? So it's like they're one position. And then Rick Benson for a year. Mm -hmm. So um, we're at three and I, we're going to maybe, or maybe you'll appoint Adam to that. So just when I think I'm making ground, I'm like back to four. Yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was somewhat surprised uh, when you said that I had to uh, become a non voting member. Yep. It's, it's uh, is that yeah, I, w I read that as carefully as I could in the the green or the the voter or the select board guide yeah. book thing. Yeah, I didn't I didn't read it that way, but that doesn't mean there isn't something that's not in the book that I didn't right. read. Right, so. it's one of those things. There's only there's a few incompatible offices, and that's basically what happens. But you know what, Gene, you still come, you still participate. We you know and, right. and everything, which is great and. You know, it's right now, you know, we're not really voting on much anyways. We're just amending the bylaws. So right, right. it's also, there's a red book that's also for zoning and planning, but I'll double check the rule, but I'm pretty sure what I had was that you had to become, uh, that you had to become an ex officio. It, but, um, I, that, that's fine. I just want to make sure we get the work done. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's a list that with the resignation coming up here. Yeah, exactly. And you can, like I said, you're going to participate anyways. And you know, so it, it's fine. I think it's good. And it's, if you want to continue that, that would be lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we'll get through it, you know, but yeah, it would be nice if we could, I talked to somebody today who I was hoping to convince, but um then it came out that he had once been on the planning commission and wasn't looking to rejoin. So <laughs> I tried. So that's when you say, have you thought about being a lister? Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> yeah. It was Rick Wright, the farmer. So I think he's- Oh, there you go. <laughs> More than qualified. Yeah. All right. So we will get that going. Uh, next we had, uh, we had a resignation from the planning commission. So there was a, uh, one thing that we do ask for Gene is when somebody either wants to get on to a committee or off a committee that we have some sort of written documentation because uh, years ago we would get people that would, you know, be motioned on to a committee that didn't know they were on a committee um, or, you know, you know, leave and never give you any type of formal information to, to get them off the committee. So they'd be on there forever. Um, so uh, so there was in our packet a brief email by Wayne Townsend um, for his uh, resignation from the Planning Commission. I'm assuming it was effective Wednesday the 3rd um, from the email. So unfortunately, because we've tried this in the past, Gene, too, is we thought at one point if we just if we just disapprove the person trying to resign, then they would have to stay on. But unfortunately, that doesn't work that way. So, so we just have to accept, uh, I just need a motion to accept Wayne Townsend's resignation from the Planning Commission. So moved. Lindley moved, Dave second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Maybe. I do want to share my disappointment. Okay. And then uh, just when uh, Therese thought she was gaining ground, she's just barely treading water. So uh, then the next was uh, an appointment uh, to the Planning Commission for a three-year term. Uh, and 
that is Adam Saffron. And he did attend our last planning commission meeting um, and had some, you know, good insight. He was concerned because he and the Cartwrights, um, and at the time Wayne lived near each other in Lilliesville, but I assured him that beggars could not be choosers and that they could, that was fine with us. Um, but he, he was interested. He was, you know, willing to do the homework. And, and um, so I thought, you know, hey, he's interested. He's, and he participated. So um, it's all, all good signs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, you know, people that have never done the plan, I mean, you're not, when you're getting on the planning commission, you're, you're not like reinventing the wheel, right? I mean, you're, you're taking a living document and, you know, making adjustments to it um, and, and to the town and, and working on your, is it every five years, the plan? Well, yes. five, eight year deal for the town plan, but so, we had decided after um, Rick and I attended a training from Two Rivers, uh, Paul was there too, which, you know, was wonderful and horrifying all at the same time. So we decided that we're going to do the, the updates, just the amendments of stuff we, of things that we know are, are wrong or need to be clarified. And huh? then I spoke to um, Peter Gregory at, town, at Two Rivers, and they're going to write a planning grant, and then get we'll get some assistance to help us with a major rewrite of the town regulations because so many things came out in that training that were really interesting um, about bonus densities, you know, how to develop instead of maybe doing these setbacks, but doing other mm -hmm. things to be done like spaghetti lots and how to encourage development, maybe even some redistricting because I know Rick Benson was interested. So um, it's going to be a process, but so we'll, we'll move forward with the, the amendment to fix the things we know are really big and, but that's a bigger rewrite. That's, yeah, that's the bylaws. Yes. Uh, but yes, the town plan is on a five-year cycle for renewal. Yep. Every five. Yep. And I think it's maybe five to eight. I think you have a little bit of, I think you can yeah. adopt it at the five year to say we're working on it and, um, you know, kind of, and gives you a little bit more time, but yeah. And it was such a great job. I mean, they did a wonderful job with the recent town plan. So hopefully with the next time you're not looking at such a major, major rewrite, but mm -hmm. zoning regs haven't been done since I think 2016 or 2017. Um, but we have a meeting this Thursday at Thursday. 30. So if anybody wants to come, we're there <laughs> via Zoom. I'll send you the link. So Adam, I think will be a good addition. Yes. Move to appoint Adam Saffron to the Planning Commission. Second. Hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 Had to mute for a second. Brady was running some hot laps through the house here. I, he, <laughs> a cabin fever. He's like going nuts. He just wants all the snow to be gone at this point. Well, him and everybody else. Dog yeah. Dog. It's hard to run out on ice, you know? True. So, all right. Yeah. And then we have our annual financial plan for town highways. So, um, this here, Gene, is where we uh, make sure that. Uh, we identify the proper mileage for the classification codes for the town highways that we have. And, and based upon that estimated assessment value that they will uh, contribute uh, revenue wise for the, for the year. Um, so we adopt this once a year. So it's basically us um, just um, documenting that we, this is how many miles of class one, two and three roads we have. If you don't adopt your annual financial plan for town highways or your annual town road and bridge standards, you won't get any of the VTRAN that I've written. <laughs> so you get zero dollars incentive to get it done. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second by Dave. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And some of these are going to go by fast, Gene, but most of these are kind of. Uh, That's good. No, just, I understand. I read them. Just pencil whipping uh, rubber stamping things. Uh, next one, pretty similar. We have the town road and bridge standards. I do have a question. Uh, this one has a signature thing. When this is adopted, do we all need to go to the town hall or the town offices to sign? 
Yep, I already have a clipboard at the back door. Okay. You can actually <laughs> enter the handicap ramp to my office and there's a clipboard. There's several things that require your signature. You can tell you've been through the whole packet. So I have a pen and a clipboard right at the back door. So even if I'm not there, I'm on the phone, just come in and you can find all your tabs. We do okay. eventually, um, what we will do here at some point, and we did it a little while ago, Jean, was we took all the warrants. It was, it was a stack. And everybody, I put them in one of the tables in my office mm -hmm. and everybody came in one at a time and signed them. So yes, the, the, the bad thing about Zoom. Right, okay, good. So this again uh, is the town road and bridge standards. So that's our inventory. Move to adopt. Second. Okay, so moved by Paul, second by Lindley, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> This next one, I maybe I just missed it, but I don't remember ever being asked for hazardous waste day. Did we in the past? Like maybe yeah, we maybe. did one last year. Yeah, because it was a year ago. <laughs> so this one, um, Chris, either you can authorize me to sign, or you got you can sign. Um, yeah. This says landowner. You can do whatever you want and just do it in the motion. And um, but yeah, we do you sign one every year. Yeah. So this one, there's there's two hazardous waste days, Gene, right? That, that we have to do by law. Um, but one of them has to be held at another Alliance town. So the last, the other one that was held was in Rochester. Yeah. And so this one, they're going to hold that right at our facility. Yes. Uh, Saturday, April seventeenth. So I'll move oh, on this one here. So I would re uh, request a motion to hold the hazardous waste day for April 17th, 2021 at the transfer station and to allow our town manager, Therese Kirby, to sign on behalf of the board. So move. Second. Okay, second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Close one, barely got that one done. Whew. Guys are brutal tonight. Hey, does anybody know if Rochester voted to remove themselves from the alliance out there? Um, it wasn't Rochester, it was Pittsfield. Pittsfield. Oh, Pittsfield, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. And they did. Overwhelmingly. They did. Okay. With that, okay. it takes, um, we get less money for our solid waste implementation plan, and we get less money, obviously, our alliance fees in July. So... I think they were six, I want to say 61 or 6,200. So the Alliance fees will drop by that much. And the SWIP drops from by like 12, six. I think it, the SWIP maybe drops by a thousand or 1200. So yeah, it's, it's a bummer. I guess mm. they're, I heard they're going to go to uh, Rutland. Rutland. Yeah. Not just Brandon, Rutland, yeah. So, yep, unfortunately, they did pass, and hopefully, well, good thing is the town meeting's over, so I think, so hopefully nobody runs out and holds another town, you know, town mm. meeting to, to get out. Um, and then we have a uh, class one liquor license renewal for cockadoodles. These will, um, this, the license will have to be signed. And um, just make sure, um, if you do approve it, make sure that you sign in the approval area. Stop it. And Gene, one thing you learn, don't be very careful because you'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> if you have a senior moment. <laughs> Well, remember, we get to joke about this with you until somebody does that themselves. Signs on the other column, huh? Yeah. Does, oh. <laughs> if, if it makes you feel better, Paul, my first thing I ever signed, I signed in Carl's spot. There you <laughs> go. Their spot. I was so excited to sign. <laughs> oh, 
I'd forgotten about that. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> Merle didn't let me live it down either. Luckily, he didn't thank you for it. bringing that back up, Lindley. We'll yeah. Make sure well, we use it. Again. It's on yeah. video now too. That's good. That's all good. <laughs> Do you have a question, Gene, about the liquor license? Not about the liquor license. I want to go back to the Pittsfield thing. Oh, yeah. Does that change the budget? Because uh, the budget was approved by the town based okay. on their being in. So they're just going to have to underspend. You know, hopefully that because the tipping fees are based basically in my rough math i believe that the tipping fees are about 56 point something percent of what the fee you know what they collect for revenue so hopefully um if, if since they're going to go somewhere else there'll be less trash coming in so yes the revenue is down but the expenses will be down and the manager at the facility is just going to have to keep in mind that she's going to be collecting you know Six She's collecting. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's right. a bummer for sure. And and of course, because that budget is actually adopted in October, which is right when we're kind of starting ours. Um, you know, you had no idea. You're so far out from town meeting that it really caught us all off guard. But you know, the likelihood is that it will it will negatively affect their budget this year. Oh, heck yeah. So uh, the class one liquor license. So, you know, typically these liquor licenses, Gene, are um, like we had talked about when, um, when we were talking with Owen earlier, is, or I'm sorry, it was Jesse, um, that, you know, usually the indoor ones for the most part are, you know, they're, they're governed by Vermont Liquor uh, Board. Um, and we, we approve them and it goes to the liquor board. Yes, because you have yeah. final... You're the Final local approval. liquor commissioners. Yeah. Right. So local liquor commissioners, you can, if you want to disapprove a license for some reason, you can, you have, you know, and you have a little, you have some authority there. Um, but yes, in the end, once you approve it, it becomes, look, it goes to liquor control. They mm -hmm. obviously usually approve it, but if there's any issues with it, um, with the liquor license, that certainly falls under their jurisdiction. Okay. So usually these go through relatively easily, unless there's some sort of major issue, um, you know, with the um, establishment at hand, or you know, they're standing with the town, or something like that. Um, the only one one that we had a lot of conversation on was um, when we had an outside um, permit um, through uh, Babe's Bar there. So that you know, at that time, it kind of you know, the, the town will interject more things into. Yeah, I, I remember that conversation. Safely. Yeah. So, but usually yeah. inside, you know, anything that's kind of inside is, you know, they, they have the, you know, the liquor commission that they have to um, uh, make happy. So. Right. Um, okay. And do, 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 do. so this one, uh, so I just need a motion to Accept the renewal of the class one liquor license for Cockatoo Gold. Second, Dave. Oh, oh, we got a motion from Dave. Second, or I'm sorry, did someone else motion uh, make a motion? So Dave motioned it. We get a second. Second, Lindley. Okay, got it. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then next we had a uh, policy regarding road postings. So we had been talking about posting some roads. We've been talking about this for a while. This was something Mo had mentioned before. So obviously you get this letter from the state every year. We just got 60 of the road postings. And I had told Alan that, um, you, that uh, you know you were going to want some of the fourth class roads posted the thing about posting is you have to do both ends so <laughs> um, yeah and I, and I know our fourth class road committee had made the recommendation about posting uh, roads um, to help with the condition of them how does and I think I know the answer to this but how does posting these these roads affect agriculture transportation 
They are exempt. Uh, they are exempt. Yeah. Uh, okay. municipal firefighting, construction, machinery, agriculture vehicles. I did speak with uh, Derek Wright today and asked him about the milk truck. And he said that the milk truck comes out about noon, but he can't affect that delivery because of just, you know, there's other farms and to make it more effective, but he does have grain and fuel and other things. And he said they certainly try to, um, you know, come earlier in the morning, but, and obviously the right farms been out there for many, many years, but um, nope, they're exempt. Logging. Okay. Logging, um, I would have to, I don't think they are, but we could, I could look for sure under well, I agriculture services. It didn't say logging. So I don't, know. And because I know a lot of times they do winter, will haul in the winter because of that. So they would have to get um, an overweight permit. And then sometimes what happens is even though people get overweight permits, they'll make a phone call to the town office or to the road foreman, Gene, and say, hey, I've got this oversized load and, and, and Alan will look at the weather and say, Hey, look, it's going to be cold. Do it on X day, but try to get here before, you know, 10 AM or whatever, while the road's still held together. So. And, and they're posted on each end. What they're, about intersections? They're supposed to be posted on each end. That's the, that's the rule. Okay. So I get, yeah, it, so this, um, so the seasonal limitations that you have here, November 15th to December 31st and January 1st to May 15th, is that, is that consistent with what other towns are doing or? I assume so. I mean, when I looked at Paulette, that's exactly what theirs did. If you look at the letter from the office of the secretary for VTrans, that's exactly what they say too. Mm -hmm. That's the same time frame. Time, excuse me, time frame. Sorry. And um, but yeah, I looked at uh, I think it was Paulette, and um, they had the same time frame as well. I mean, the only reason why I bring that up is I, you know, I often see, you know, being in the business, and you know, I often see that, um, you know, towns post their roads, um, you know end of March through, you know, mid-May or end of May um, due to the spring thaw, but doesn't always mean that, you know, like usually in the fall, a lot of, a lot of it's, it's a good time of year in the fall to do, you know, loggers getting into the woods and stuff because they have a minimal impact um, at that time because the, you know, the roads are frozen and, you know, so I, I just, <clears throat> I, I guess the question I had was, you know, why would we have to post the roads in the middle of winter when they're frozen, you know, um, or, or, you know, or should this really just be a true mud season? Yeah. We're talking, you know, maybe March 15th or May 15th or something like that. I, I don't think that those dates are cut in stone. I think they're recommendations. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's I, I mean, I've been in this town for 60 years and I don't think we've ever posted in January. Yep. Well, I guess that was my question. About now, now through May. But I, I mean, unless I'm reading it wrong, I mean, the way I read this is that. Yeah, no, nope. I think there's a couple reasons. I think is maybe that there, you know, could be that the state's trying to have a little more, give you a little more authority <laughs> over, you want people to file overweight permits. And even in November, I mean, you know that we could have had, you know, sure. a thaw depending on the road. It also just mm -hmm. gives you a heads up. It doesn't mean you're not going to, they're going to have to get an overweight permit, which is $10, $5 for individual mm -hmm. truck and $10 for a fleet, you know? So I think the other thing too, is it gives you a little bit of accountability to someone if somebody comes in and really tears up the road. So. Yeah. Uh, Cause we know how far, you know, we know how far $10 gets us. I know it's, that's <laughs> set by state statute. Yeah. Um, so I think it just gives you a little flexibility, certainly too, if you have log trucks coming in in the fall, um, you know, so they have to get an overweight permit and you, you know, they're around, it's not always the end of the world, but I'm happy to change the dates if you would like. Well, I'm, I guess I'm just, you know, it's like the dates you have here kind of locking us in that. 
Um, so that doesn't mean they can't do that. It just means they have to have an overweight permit? Yep. All right. It says a excess weight permit yeah. to supersede uh, posted road mud season weight limits. Um, but like I said, for the most part, people, when they're doing something big, they call and call the town office and talk mm. to, um, or call the garage and talk to Alan or whoever's up there. Well, I, I think to what Jean was just saying, if you have, if I'm a truck driver and I have an overweight permit, mm -hmm my truck during these during this calendar portion of the year i cannot be on those roads right he did not. even if i have a weight and i think that was what gene was saying is yeah i i don't want to tell our loggers that they can't go take care of the uh, logging in the public property that we just talked that you talked about right. last month yeah yeah no i think that um so what, we could change it. I just gave you the standard state language right. because yeah. while it says excess weight permits do not supersede, um, they, like I said, most people usually call and Alan will work out a time frame that works for them. But what would you rather see? Say, say that you had an early spring, you want to see like February 15th to May 15th or? Yeah, I think that makes more sense. I mean. I mean, yeah, because uh, plain reading says that otherwise they wouldn't be able to log. You know, I think, you know, the true meaning of this is, you know, that we don't want to have damage to our roads during the thaw season, right? Yep. So, and I would say a majority of the time thaw, it, which we're seeing this week, takes, you know, <laughs> well, sometimes it happens in January too, but, you know, typically it's uh, mid-March through the end of May, you know. Um, yeah, you could also, we could say where it says excess weight permits, we could say um, where it says they may not supersede, supersede or say do not supersede, you know, without permission of the road permit. I mean, you could right. put language in there to um, allow well, that to happen and give you a little control. But so what's your time yeah. frame that you would like me to change this to? I don't know what it you want to do February 15th, Dave, or you think that's too early in the year? I think that, I mean, it might, I think it's a little early. Okay. I think March 1st. March 1st to May 15th? Yep, I think that's a, a good average time in this, in this town. Okay, so what about this statement that excess weight permits do not supersede? We could take that out and, um, I think you can give yourself. No, we want to leave that in for that time frame. Never you mind. Forget it. You do want to leave it in for that time frame for March. Right. Okay. Forget it. And I think anybody who's done any business in this town knows that they have to, if they talk to either right now, either you or Alan, you can work out something either yes or no. I mean, like. Yeah, depending on know. the situation. Right. I yeah. Just, well, what I can do is you can. Um, Adopt the Paul, you know, the amended. I can make the changes, or we could. But, but you may want to just that note there. You know, excess weight permits do not supersede posted road mud season weight limits. You know, or or as authorized by, you know, the town manager or the road foreman or something. Yeah. You know, or you want to leave the statement in there, especially if we're going to change it to March first. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to say March March first to May fifteenth. And then, um, yeah, I could just put uh, excess weight limits, not supersede posted road month season weight limits, and then. Oh, hey, Doug's done a lot of work for us. Doug, what's your thoughts on the time of year when um, the roads are at its most critical there in the spring? If it would be, I would, I wouldn't mind like around February, late February, into April. Because that's because as you've seen the weather already, it does thaw out pretty good. You put a heavy truck on some of those roads, it's gonna they break in, in, in portions. The whole road don't go at one time. And the only thing is they have been calling for permission to get on the roads before they get, you know, before they do get on them, before they thaw out. And the um, road foreman has always tell them what time to come in. 
But only thing we get that is if they violate that, something needs to be done because otherwise they're going to run it. They, they will be on that road same time without permission at all. So somewhere down the line, they have to be, I, I think we need to find some way of finding them to make sure that they stay within that, within that portion. Yeah, that's yeah. what it says. Uh, the operation of a vehicle in excess of the posted weight limit of a town highway is a statutory traffic violation for which the operator may be issued a state traffic ticket from a law enforcement officer. And it's, the town may also sue the operator for the cost of repairing the road. Yes. So is February, so you think February 15th is too early? No, I, I think February 15th is good and, and just stretch it a little bit longer and into um, maybe end of uh, mid-April, somewhere in there. Okay, maybe February 15th to like, well, April 30, maybe, because you always, we always get snow in April, at least once, right? So. Yeah, well, okay, well, yeah, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you, I was slip sliding around last month of going up that hill on Main Street, oh, from yeah. Friendly Bridge to Main. Uh, it was uh, pretty muddy and pretty bad. Uh, so I would go with an earlier date. Okay, so we have February 15th to April 30th. That sounds good. I like it. All right, Doug, I like it. He's decisive. Okay, and we're going to leave in the comment about excess weight permits do not supersede because, and I'll make a little asterisk. Right. That, um, basically, someone who called the yeah. road foreman. That's good. So I'll make a note to call the road foreman for um, yeah. permission. Okay. So since Alan needs to get these things posted, do you want to just approve it with the amend the amended dates yeah we can um so i just entertain a motion to approve the policy regarding road postings as amended oh move so moved by paul second by lindley all in favor aye aye okay thank you See how fast we found common ground on that. Some boards that probably would have taken a couple of months worth of work there. <laughs> Doug brought us all together. That was really yeah. good. Yeah. I think she did that intentionally. Mm -hmm. Slipped those dates by us. She's pretty clever. Get a watch her. That's it. We got John her eyes on you now. What else did she slide in here? I don't know. Fundraising policy. So this is on our ever-ending quest to update policies. And as you can see, when the last one this was done was uh, February 22nd, 1999. So this is one of the older ones, but we're trying to catch them up. <laughs> so I gave you two, two things. I gave you the copy where I, you can see exactly where I made the changes. And then I mm -hmm. gave you the copy you know, the clean copy. So I thought that, that would be helpful to you. Um, and I also corrected my spelling error at the top, which was subdivision. Subdivision? Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. how much you got you? I know, Paul would have found it. Or Gene, Gene's, Gene's quick, he catches these things. So anyway, so you can see the changes that I made. Um, like I said, we have a list of policies and, and we also have committees fundraising and things like that. And now it's the season that they're going to start fundraising. So hence mm -hmm. uh, the 1999, um, more than one reason to put it to the forefront. Right. No, so I, anybody has any changes, questions? If I, so does this this uh, kind of goes into the rec, the rec committee and talking about fundraising events and those types of uh, activities, is that the part of this policy that we, we need to be right on top of those fundraising activities? Well, I think it goes along with the grant writing policy that I wrote like, three years ago. Uh, you should know what's going on with people. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do with the money? You know, you mm -hmm. drive by and all of a sudden, you know, coin drop should not be a surprise to you. Or all of a sudden someone's having a, um, 
you know, somebody's doing a silent auction, somebody, you know, we have a lot of people raising grant, doing grant uh, writing. We also have people doing fundraisers. So for me, you need to know what they are because it needs to go, you know, within what you believe the parameters of that committee are for. And, and maybe, you know, you also have the right to know what's going on in the town. So like I said, this was written in 99. Um, I also think it's good, like I said, I think that they should have to get fun, prior approval from the select board. Maybe you're not happy, you know, maybe, um, I'll tell you another town they did, they were gonna do a calendar that some people felt was inappropriate. And there was a big discussion about that, let me tell you. And um, so I think it's important that you have a handle on all, you know, what's going on in town for fundraising. It allows you to speak, you know, to everybody and let people know what's going on, but it also gives you, um, you know, the say on, yes, you can do that. And, you know, maybe you also want to know what they're going to do with the money. So like I said, I didn't, I just look through the list of policies that we have, you know, we're trying to kick out at least one policy every meeting. So this one was one of the older ones. Yeah, I, I, uh, I didn't have any real comments on it after reading it. And I do appreciate, uh, especially with policies and things, it's always nice to see what, what exactly the change is, uh, other than try to figure out what the change was. So, uh, yeah. That was helpful to follow through with. Yeah, there's also, we are not a 501c3 and we people get confused about that. So mm -hmm. we have a political subdivision by a different IRS regulation, but you know, people um, not, you know, if, if you're gonna make a contribution, it's only deductible if it's used exclusively for public purposes. And that's a question we actually get a lot. Um, committees uh -huh. assume that because we're a town uh, that we're not 501c3, it, we're not. Right. So. so, so Teresa, the last item on the list about uh, the board shall not engage in fundraising activities. So all the funds that are collected, for example, in the coin uh, collection that the rec committee wants to do are payable to the town treasurer. All those funds have to be payable to the town treasurer as opposed to a, a different account of some kind. Well, it could go, I mean, anything that's, um, you know, if they're going to put it in their capital account, it obviously is paid to the town treasurer because it, you know, basically anything due to the town. Um, it comes to the town of Bethel. So even any of the capital funds are all in our, are, are in your names. But private groups that have coin drops, for example, that this would not apply. Right. Yep, apart. exactly. Yeah, because I actually you're going to have one from the Bethel Youth Sports and they have, you know, they wanted to do one in March. And I told the lady, yeah, you got to pick a better date. I don't think the select board, you know, if we get a snowstorm, you can't be out in the road. So um, but that would go to them. You're right, because they are not they are not affiliated with the town. Sorry, then the girls are getting restless. Oh. And Brady. Are they also running in circles like Brady? <laughs> uh, Abby's not running fast. She uh, had quite a bit of uh, running uh, earlier at basketball, so she's kind of beat. They're ready for bedtime. <laughs> um, motion to accept the uh, fundraising policy. Second by Dave, it looks like. So we have motion by Paul. Was there a second? Dave. Dave. Okay. All in favor? Aye. So another policy has been brought up into the 2000s. <laughs> so I just want to say before you touch this, the social media policy draft number two. We're, we do not need to go through this thing tonight. I sent it to you and I think I made a note in my town manager's report that um, because the thing is huge, obviously. It's a little bit, I think it's a page thinner than it was last time. So any feedback you have, you could send me, um, Paul sent me an email about it, um, or you can just mark up this, your copy and, and give it to me. Um, 
I had taken all the, I got feedback from a bunch of people last time and I've sent the same draft two to the same people who worked, you know, helped me with amendments of the first time. Lisa was one. Um, so I appreciate that. So I try to take everybody's feedback into consideration to try to make it more specific and um, in certain areas and do some clarification. So again, I don't need to, you know, you know, you don't have to go through all 10 pages tonight, but if you could, you know, in another you know, week or so, week or two, give me your feedback, it would be super. Um, Lindley's got her hand up. I do. So I have two things that I think are worth discussing as a group, and then I'll send the rest of my comments. Okay, excellent. Um, is it okay for me to dive in? Uh, so the first, on the first page, um, so the second to last paragraph is uh, the policy applies to the three select board approved platforms, uh, Facebook, from Porch Forum and the official town website. And this is a this is a twofold thing. So one is um, is there is there a reason Instagram is not included and or do we know if any groups use Instagram? Because I know that it is sort of on par at this point with Facebook and if not maybe even sort of surpassing Facebook for usage. And so just kind of getting ahead of adding that later, do we want to consider having that now? So that, that's point one, which we can discuss. And the other of that is, um, and I, I can't remember if my note is specifically from this or if it's from a sep separate section as well, but there was a part because of the, just the town website, does that prevent the EIC from having a website, which I think we sort of started approving them for and sort of where did we land on that discussion that were we saying, no, they can't have their own website. Are we, so just kind of wanting to go back to that conversation. Um, okay, so and then I have a second one, but I think we should discuss this first. All right, so Instagram, I have, if, if anybody has an Instagram account, I am completely unaware of it. Um, this was actually a suggestion that I received from more than one person who went through the first draft, which was, I think the select board needs to limit um, to Facebook, I say from porch form, even though, you know, we don't have control over that platform and websites. And actually, um, I thought about equity and inclusion after. So that's a good amendment to, to add in because you did approve it. You did say three of you said they could move forward with a website. So um, the reason that there's no other form of social media in here is because that was a suggestion, as I said, for more than one person. Um, I, I, you know, I mean, obviously their policies, they can be amended. If the times change and all of a sudden Instagram, you know, it's just hard to keep track of everything and all the rules. So that's how it went in there. But I'm actually going to write down equity and inclusion because I kind of on my, I don't know, fourth read through, I realized that I thought I was missing. And so that related, related to that, I have a question about um, being that specific in the policy or whether the policy should just simply talk about uh, approved platforms. And then as time and need uh, evolve, uh, a, an enabling motion would be to approve the following pro platforms uh, to be subject to the policy rather than having to go back and amend the policy every time somebody wants to uh, consider it. Now, the other place where that comes up is uh, in the listing, there's a, uh, the, the listing of committees with their Facebook pages, again, is that a is that appropriate for the policy, or is that more appropriate as a uh, the policy governs all of them wherever they are? But at some point, we're going to have to say these are the these are the things that the policy covers. Well, we this originally started with a, a just a slightly larger version from Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and that actually is their suggestion that you list those specific, you know, ones in there. We don't have to, but again, it was from people who went through the first draft and were on draft number two. They their feeling was 
because the policy is so huge, because social media is such a big deal now, and we don't have the staff, we readily admit we don't have the staff to monitor everybody's posting. Hence why we said in this, you know, you either have to have your department head or your committee approve the postings. Um, some people felt like, since this is the first time we're stepping into these waters, it be start tight. And, um, and but you know what? I don't know. You know, we certainly will, we can. I'm not arguing we shouldn't say not that only approved platforms. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think that's a good policy. <laughs> Yep. But to to then go the next step and specify yep. in in the the overall generic policy itself, these are the specific ones that are approved. Uh, I I would prefer, but that's my own understanding of constitutions, bylaws, et cetera, et cetera that they should be more general and then more specific, uh, the specificity should come where there is less uh, um, it's just a, it's a. Yeah. I get what yeah. you're saying. And you know what, Gene, it just crossed my mind is something that we do with like the water department. When we approve, when you guys approve those ordinances we, you often say, hey, that, you know, we approve the schedule, whatever, right? Or exhibit B is the rates. We could do that here if it's going to make everybody feel more comfortable. Or, or we could say in the beginning, just like you say, um, only approve platforms. And then at some point we could say see exhibit A and then exhibit A could list the current ones. And then the only thing you'd be updating is exhibit A. So there's kind of a meet options for people if we, you know, to make everybody more comfortable. It was um, going to be my suggestion because in section four, you state uh, the select board and town manager will be responsible for maintaining a list of all social media platforms and use the names of all administrators. So that could be exhibit A and you just reference it there and then you reference it again in the limited public forums of like these are people. Yeah. I do think Dean's point is like, you're going to have to update that and to have to update the, po the full policy as opposed to yeah. you know, mm -hmm. a section. Yeah, and I think too, and we all know Trees doesn't use social, I don't use Facebook, so I had to have a, Kelly, uh, Kelly and I are trying to figure out the other day because when, there was already a Facebook page for this year. Kelly got there, so somehow they attached her name to it and her personal Facebook page and then so we had to go through this whole exercise the other day of figuring out how to create a, like a Bethel Vermont as a person so that we could have administrative power. Oh, Lord. I was like, okay, this is really good. We don't have the people to do this. But so I like those ideas. Um, I can do that. And you said you had something else, when, uh, Lindley? Uh, yeah, and it was a little bit more of a clarification. So my recollection from our last conversation was each committee would have somebody who is designated as their, I don't, I don't, yeah, thank you. Um, but then, and, and I did see that language in there, but then um, I guess, kind of guess I wanted clarification on section five uh, on page three, the municipal social media moderator. I had been under the impression when we had our first round of this was that you were feeling like we didn't have the resources, the human resources to have a, a singular person who went through all the posts or kind of approved them beforehand. But this read to me like that's exactly what that was. And I just wanted to know if I was misunderstanding one side or another or the whole thing. Well, I think that the, the hope, what, and after you read these for a while or you rewrite, it gets a little tricky. Um, I, I think that the whole, my thought was, yes, I still agree. We don't have the people to do it. I thought you were going to pick, like you were going to appoint someone. Maybe it's the chair of that committee or, you know, uh, if say, uh, oh God, no, I'm um, whoever, I try to remember who has one. Say, okay, the conservation commission. Maybe, you know, you tell the conservation commission they have to pick you know, somebody. Um, so maybe I need to fix the language. Yeah, I think because the way 
the way it read to me was like there'll be one moderator of the whole system and every yeah. every designated administrator from the committee reports to the moderator and the moderator approves a post as opposed to what i heard you just saying and correct me if i'm wrong but you were just saying each committee would have a moderator that's responsible for their committee's posts well not a singular town employee but here's the problem with that that's what i think I think that because we don't have the staff time that they, that we make each committee, you want a website, you want a this or that, then you get approval, but you are responsible for it. Right. But that is not the way all the feedback that I received went. Some of the feedback that I received was, yeah, no, um, we think that somebody from the town should do it. My thought was if we, and it may not, you know, so it's hard when you're combining several people's thoughts here. If the, we, if you have the committee has to approve every post, then the, the social media moderator for that committee is can't post anything without the full committee approval. So maybe when you just make your notes, Lindley, I can, um, you know, catch it. Um, by the time I combined, you know, I received comments from a bunch of people. You're trying to include them all, but sort them all out. So what my opinion was, you know, some of it was to other people's thoughts on it because they're afraid by giving away your all your authority to committees, then the town who's liable loses control. So you got to find a happy medium. Well, I, and I think, you know, piggybacking on what Lindley said, I, I guess the way I had interpreted how the board wanted to do it was, you know, I'll just, throw out an example. Let's say if Lenny is going to be in charge of the web web page for for his committee, um, that that you, so the town manager would sit down with Lenny and give him the policy and procedures for operating um, the web page successfully. And then it would be up to Lenny to take that initiative of being the overall administrator for his page and be responsible for everything that goes on that page. Um, and then if something did happen, you know, if there was a complaint or whatever it might be, uh, that would come to you, Therese, and then you would then you would just go and talk to that one individual that's in charge to make that work. Um, I, I guess that's kind of the way I had saw it being drawn up, but well, I, I mean, again, I don't see, I mean, we just don't have enough resources at the office to be, you know, right. checking up on all this. But so, so let's clear the select board. I didn't hear from every member. So not everybody gave feedback and we didn't have a big, like entire hour long discussion about this policy, but a couple people did do go through and, um, but there was some concern and I think Paul may, Maybe. Yeah, I, I want to speak on that when we get to it. Yeah. Kind of say. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I think we're jumping ahead a little bit. I think I still have a lot of reservations about having allowing committees to have websites. I think websites are a different animal than Facebook, um, front porch forum, etc. <clears throat> At the last meeting, we did tell the equity committee to proceed with, you know, doing some basic construction of a website, but we didn't say, we said pending, you know, the, the um, completion of this policy. And, I, and I, I, I'm still not thinking that websites are, should fall, uh, it should be allowed at this point. I don't, I think it needs um, a lot more structure, it's a lot less controllable. And again, I'll just go back to liability, town liability for things that may occur on websites that I think don't necessarily happen the same, they're more controllable on Facebook and, and other social media platforms. So I, I just wanna throw that out there. I'm, I, I don't think we're at that point yet. So you don't, just out of curiosity, I, you, cause since websites are pretty static, or can be. I actually, Facebook scares the bejeepers out of me. Um, whereas a, a website for me is a little more static. 
so that they, maybe you actually as a select board have, or the committee has more control over it because they're not really getting any feedback from anybody, but Facebook scares me. So, but I just want to be clear, but that well, I you, understand. You can that. control commenting on Facebook, right? I know it's awful. I know um, we, we turned it up really high. So basically if anybody wants, you can't shut it off, but you can turn the settings so high that if somebody wants to post a comment on your Facebook, it comes like for in our case, it goes to Kelly first. So she has to read it so she can mm -hmm. approve it or not. So basically she just doesn't approve it. And, but it's a, that's, that's definitely a pain. Um, but I, I mean, whatever you guys decide, I'm, I, I can do whatever you want. Um, but you're right. I thought we, thought we were Paul. leaning Paul towards them. Um, that is what you said, Paul, is you did tell them pending the social media. So thank you for clarifying that. You're right. And I, I thought the majority of the board at that time was leaning towards having information flowing one direction only. Um, so there wouldn't be any feedback um, coming back. So it, so even if you were Facebook or a web page, it would be operated very similar um, where, you know, certain content would be on that page. You know, we talked about some examples and I think one thing, uh, you know, maybe we could spell out what some of that content might be structured wise a little better of, you know, like we talked about, you know, who the board members are and, you know, when your meetings are and, um, you know, you can put your, um, you know, your next uh, agenda on there or your meeting minutes or, you know, you know, what are your projects you're working on or maybe, uh, you know, your schedule, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, well, I have a question or a suggestion possibly because this policy is such a bear. Um, mm. Frankly, I wonder if, you know, maybe we just could get, you know, Paul obviously has read through it more than once and answered some questions for me and um, Lindley's looking at it. Uh, you, Lindley said she'd ask Lily to read it. I wonder if we should just basically get a couple select board members together to help me go around it again. Be, either way it's otherwise I think the next time we put it on the agenda we're mm. gonna have just like an entire hour to focus just on this policy whereas maybe if you can ham out a little more specificity between a couple of board members with myself I don't know kind of almost like a little subcommittee I mean I don't care I just it's yeah. just a suggestion or a thought um because it is so big um okay. or we could just set a meeting for it and just, this is the only topic on the agenda or I just set aside we do another agenda and there's no appointments and we just try to focus on this thing it's it's definitely not an easy policy to just right I mean it's it's not you know with some of the current events that are going on and you know and and just you know we spelled it out in there or you did you know that the you know ever evolving communications that are happening out there you know um, yeah. Um, you know, these platforms are always being, you know, created and taken down and changed and um, it, it's challenging. There's no yeah. doubt about it. And, you know, and the town takes on a lot, you know, the liability for the content that's out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever that might be. Um, yeah. Maybe everybody just takes a couple weeks and gives me their feedback again. And I give you kick back out draft three to the full board i have it out to let's see d tree went through it last time with a fine tooth comb which was super helpful and i got feedback from several other people that read it um uh, lisa kelly Kim, um d tree you know you guys had it um i sent it to the equity and inclusion committee um i didn't hear anything back but i sent it to them um so maybe we just try with this exhibit. So we kind of that, and I need to obviously tighten up the whole section five. Um, so I'll go through that again. And but I yeah, it's a it's a big animal, and and you see the the larger municipalities have you know maybe not a full time position, but somebody that their job description is part of mm -hmm. media and website, and you know, I mean, obviously we can't afford that um, position in our little town, but somehow yeah. I think that we can construct it in a way that we can keep the ownership, you know, there's responsibility for that lays on somebody's plate um, and that the town office doesn't have to, 
micromanage it every, you know, every day. Well, the idea that we got, what I took it from when, uh, if you remember, Nicole Sear was here from the energy committee. What I <clears throat> he was the one who said, sometimes they have meetings just to approve their posts. So I really loved that idea. So then the, the entire committee is looking at it before it goes out there. Mm. So um, that's fine. You know, we don't have to pass this tomorrow. You know, we're working on it and, and I feel like we're getting closer. So, but I appreciate all the, the comments and the questions, but it, and if you can put them in writing it helps me because then I put Lindley's next to Paul's or Jean's or Dietrich's and I can I'm trying to pull to make sure either clarify the questions or take everybody's suggestions and put them in here so it and you know in the the times that we live in right now I mean we're in a rural town yeah. um, COVID times so you're not really out meeting everybody all the time and you know, you know how do we get the information out to people I guess is what these committees are really at the end of the day, you know, how do we get the information out to people that, you know, might need it, you know, social media just so happens to be the, the hot spot of communication. So. Yeah. Do we want to, I mean, not Good. for anybody on the board, do, do we want to have a one or two board members uh, work together and iron out some of these details or do we want to just, you know, we might get more out of it if we had two people kind of work on it rather than five of us throw comments to Therese and then, you know, I don't know. I mean, just mm -hmm. going out there. I don't, I, I, I know we all have an abundance of free time. So. Well, the other thing too, is if everybody reads it and gives me their feedback, maybe in certain sections where there's um, dissenting viewpoints, I could just put in there, here's option A, here's option B, you know, so that that way you can mm -hmm. see, okay, you know, Chris thinks this, Lindley thinks this and Dave thinks this. So, what's your common ground here? So maybe maybe just by me putting a little more detail in there of opposing issues might, or, or not opposing issues, opposing thoughts um, might make it easier Then everybody can kind of talk about, oh, I see why they think that. And then when you read over the third draft, you might come to some consensus or comments. That makes, that makes much more sense. Um, okay, let's do that then. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to do that. And then you can see and Sure, is there the secret to compromise? Nobody's happy. <laughs> is, is there any yeah. guidance from from the town office? You know, with you know between you and Kelly, and you know, any guidance that you can give on it, saying, you know, we might have this this amount of time that we could help out do something, but we can't do you know mm -hmm. all of it. You know, frankly, we have our own our hands or you know. We have our hands full maintaining the website, the Facebook page, and then posting specific things out on Front Porch Forum because, like I said, you can't shut off comments. So Kelly's cons, you know, getting emails or notifications from Facebook that somebody wants to post something. And, she, you know, that oh. way we don't, because we have had some nasty things, I'm sure it surprises you, <laughs> posted on our website or our Facebook page. I mean, we took us a minute to find or hear about. Um, so I wouldn't mind every time, if somebody wants to do this, I'm happy to go to every committee meeting if I have to, or each one of us or all of us can split them up and say, okay, mm -hmm. here's the rules. You guys pick somebody and then I can I'm happy to sit down and with them and, and go through the policy with them. Mm -hmm. um, I still want to come up with once we're done a little checklist so that everybody has the same verbiage on their Facebook page or website or whatever. And it's in this policy, but I'd like to flush it out into a little checklist for everybody. I feel like because the thing is, you know, 10 pages long, that might make it a little bit um, more user-friendly. Yeah, I think definitely having a, like a cheat sheet for committees <laughs> when they're making the posts of like, oh, we can't say that, or we can yeah. do this. Um, yeah. just, to, um, just to play devil's advocate to Paul's earlier comment about the liability piece, I really think that a website is puts the town at less of a risk than Facebook. I think the comments that Therese was referring to are exactly what that liability with Facebook is, I think is higher than with a website. And it's just, you know, some of it is what you're comfortable with or not comfortable with. But I think when we're looking at it from the liability point of view, because a website is so, so static and you can't comment Direct, public can't comment directly on it. It actually makes it a little safer in a in a way. So just a thought I wanted to throw in there. Oh. So, so we'll just collect everybody's opinion. So just either 
scan it to me, drop it off, send me an email, whatever's easier. Or if you just want to mark up your copy, you can certainly drop it off where you're coming in to sign everything or, or just, if I'm not there, just drop it in the slot in the door. I don't care. I'll get it. And then I can compile everything. So, um, and, and as the new kid on the block, uh, there are all kinds of corporations and businesses and so on and so forth who are moving away from their own website to social media as their primary way of communicating both, both ways uh, with the public. Uh, and the, um, it, I just think that it's, it's part of modern life and, uh, we as a, as a town need to be open to listening and receiving comments as much as we are about posting from ourselves. Now, does it need does that mean we throw open the doors and let anybody put on the public bulletin board whatever they want? I don't think so. Well, I don't, I don't believe that, but I, I do think we need to figure out how to be involved with the community where the community is already engaged uh, in, a, in a meaningful, real, responsible, uh, way that is protecting uh, the town, but not uh, building such a fortress around us that people can't get into it. And and that's a uh, and at the end of the day, it might require uh, some staff designation in terms of receiving community commentary. However, that comes to us uh, and communicating. Uh, it's, uh, I, well, enough said at this point. I, huh. Somewhere there needs to be a balance between uh, concern for liability and building such a, well, surrounding the Capitol with the National Guard so that the public can't even get in. That's not what we want either. Yeah, well, I think that's a good point. I'm going to have to read a little bit more about too about the open meeting law because that's in the end what there's this whole thing about us engaging, you know, outside of a public meeting. So I'll have to read a little bit more about the open meeting law in terms of it's definitely addressed in the policy and I'll have to go back to VLCT's first draft and do a little more reading too about that. So no, you're right, Jean. I mean, unfortunately for us, it's if we were going to add staff time, our people that's definitely you know that's not our first priority but times change and maybe maybe it becomes if we ever have to add a position to the town maybe some of it is social media not just you know my planning zoning enforcing you know person that I want um so we'll see I, th I mean you definitely make a good point Jean yeah I, I just don't want to close the door entirely I mean if it is necessary then we need to figure out a way to, to make it happen rather than um, whatever. I, I, yeah, it, that's my, uh, the least amount that will really do, but it's gotta be able to do the job. Absolutely, I, I can understand. So we'll take a look at it. We'll see what we can get. Everybody reads it and gives me some feedback and we'll compile it and see where we end up. Okay. We have town manager's report. I think we went over most of it. Yeah, I think so. Just a reminder that anybody interested in attending the 2021 Virtual Select Board Institute, you can sign up on VLCT's website. Um, we are at the VLCT's passive insurance members, so we'll be billed, but it's at a reduced rate. So um, that's always a good deal. So my report just told you about that. I have the architectural oh. services. I have I'm taking appointments right now to have the walkthrough on Wednesday. So I'm getting that done. So, so far I have, I think I have three or four architectural firms coming on Wednesday at different times to go through the town garage. So that's good news. Um, we received right. 
grants and aid, and I think that's about that was all in the town report. Please, quick question on the the uh, RFP for the town garage. I didn't see anything in there about um, exterior work. Is it buried in there somewhere that I didn't see it, like lighting and road work and things that the DRB is going to be looking at? Uh, I think the, it'll have to go to the DRB at some point, won't it? Road work? Uh, what did you say, road work? I'm sorry. Yeah, like uh, surrounding road access, you know, uh, points, exterior lighting, you know, the kind of things that the DRB um, will look at with uh, site, construction site approval. Yeah, so do I, I don't even know if it has to go to the DRB, frankly, I'll have to take a look, but none of that's really changing yeah. since we're not, I mean, yes, we're expanding the footprint, but the, the access remains the same. And um, I don't, you know, the only, in lighting that I think will change is going to be inside, uh, obviously just okay. to make it more energy efficient. Um, yep. but the access is still the same where they're going to enter and everything. So, um, but glad you thought about, I'll, I'll double check my, I just made a note about that. So I have to go to the DRB. Um, okay. But it doesn't change. Uh, the, yes, the size is going to increase a little bit, but no height or anything like that. And no, no new lighting or anything. So, but thank you for that good reminder to me it i like to think we're exempt from all those things paul <laughs> we got an in with the permit lady now you know i like to think so but um did did anything else come out of the sugar hill property remember last we talked that the, there was some excess revenue generated from that purchase that may have to go back not yet yeah it's still gonna have to go back i have not since i hadn't had the closing yet i haven't sat down and calculated all the numbers yet um but now that i've heard from their attorney i'm gonna have to go back through i did speak to the lawyers and got um they sent me all their bills and but yep i'm still gonna be cutting a check to somebody but we do get to keep obviously there was a whole list from the from the yeah. our local lawyer that we could keep so okay no i just saw that on there I know. okay we had the select board minutes from the 22nd of february so i just since we did the informational meeting you can see i just basically used the agenda mm -hmm. and went through and added the minutes there and then not as nice as lisa does couple times I forgot I was taking the minutes and I had to go back and look at my notes. Did anyone have any um, any amendments to the meeting minutes or are we good to approve as written? Motion to approve or, or second or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Motion Paul, second Dave. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Other uh, communications. There was a fourth class road committee that was in there. And you had some uh, conservation committee. And the solid waste board meeting minutes were in there. And planning commission. Anybody have any comments in regards to any of those? Last but not least, Teresa's dream list I'd written down. Yeah, right. So I have a couple of these, but one of them is Dave Eddy, actually. Dave, I didn't get your email until just a little while ago, so I responded to you. But Dave had sent an email about um, trying to keep meetings. <laughs> it was a bad meeting to choose. Probably when you saw the agenda, you went searching for the article about and I think the synopsis of the article or the points were basically after about an hour, you lose about 50% participation in a meeting. So I don't shoot to make them super long and uh, for sure. And I knew this one was going to be longer because of all the appointments and some stuff we had to take care of that cropped up at the last minute. But so you're trying to say you want us done by 7 p.m.? No, no, uh, <laughs> no, but three, four hours is a, is a little much. It is. I, I, I lean more towards two. Okay. You should be I able think to we've done pretty well with that. Just obviously the budget informational meetings, we didn't really have as much control over. And then this one, I 
you know, I feel a lot of it was just motions, but then obviously we're going to, we kind of stop and explain things as we go. But so I knew this one was going to be a big one. So I will do better. Okay. Uh, I'm not really complaining too. I just want to put it out there for everybody to think about, uh, you know, that it's more, we're definitely be more effective if we stay on task All right. and move along as best, you know, once we cover something, move on. Okay, so I just have one, so I have two quick things here then. One is um, you knew that I we'd sold the, um, the oh God, now I'm drawing it. Ventrax. Thank you, Ventrax, and had put that money, sold it for 14,250. We knew we were gonna buy a zero turn with it. So I set that money aside. So I, um, and so that's what I'm gonna be doing is moving a for, moving forward with purchasing. And it's a John Deere. Um, and we're going to get it locally at use from in Royalton. And now it's United oh, yeah. Ag and Turf. And we got a municipal discount and it's going to be the zero turn to bagger. It'll go on the trailer we have and all that, which was our goal all along was to sell the Ventrax and get another mower. So I have a price of 12914 So that still leaves us some money left over to go towards the sweeper. Oh my God. That we know we need to buy because since the Ventrax was gone. So... Yeah. Um, and you know, John Deere's are John Deere's. I can call 12 different people, but I'm going to get the same price because they're all oh, and you're the same. So that, uh, that's my plan. For the yeah. hour. Um, so I, because it's over, because of the purchasing policy, yeah. I need select board approval to purchase it because it's over $5,000. Um, so that's that item. Was, was there a decision made to purchase John Deere specifically because there is, a, a, an equipment thing, uh, I, who is it up on, uh, Camp Brook? Um, oh yeah, Bye. Baron or somebody. Um, honestly, we, uh, we were just trying to look for something that we felt that would do, we needed to do. And we've had a bad habit in the past of purchasing equipment that wasn't right for the job or just, well, I, no, I understand that. I, no, I'm no, not saying, no yeah. decision. we'd made no decision about exactly what we were going to purchase. Um, I had, you know, Richard, I had Richard and Tim and I were talking about it and there just was happened to be a dealer, um, in Royalton. So we mm -hmm. figured this would be give us something that, you know, is a good quality and um, would. I, I agree uh, that John Deere is great quality. I, I just don't know. Yeah, that's all. Yep. So no, there was no decision made about what type. We just went looking and kind of had an idea of mower deck, this and that, and that's where we ended up. So do you do you have do you know what the dimensions on like how big this thing is or I have the information right here. It is let's see a sixty inch deck with a side discharge mower deck, uh -huh. um, and it has a light beacon light. It has a trash receptacle kit, which is one hundred and forty seven dollars, but which is nice. So if there's garbage, you have a place to put it. Um, we have it has the um what do you call that thing i want to call it a bagger but it's more than a bagger it's a little bit nicer okay it's a new dump from seat material collection system so it gives you a more efficient way for dealing with collecting gra grass clippings so i have the information on that. What else is in here? Let me see what else is in the price. Um, you know, a seat with armrest, that's it. The beacon light, the trash receptacle kit. Uh, so the base mower is $9,329. What it makes me laugh is they charge you $500 with us for a setup. Then they charge you another 65 for the environmental crate plus another 200 for setup. And then we did get a, um, the total for the machine was 15,787.66. Um, and we did get a discount, a municipal discount of over $2,800.
my my only question is 60 inch. What was the mowing deck on the bench racks? I don't know. My don't question know. is five foot mower deck, and Paul does a lot of mowing. That's a big deck. So if you don't have all perfectly flat land, mm -hmm. you're going to be damaging the mower or the ground. Yeah. Because what we have for mowing is um, obviously now in the fire station, we have the rec center, uh, we have the uh, Peavine Park, um, I'm trying to think of his whole list of, of mowing, so all the parks and stuff. So the thought was, as we had discussed, you know, prior when we were selling the bench tracks was, we were also looking for something that would gain us obviously a little, a little time, which would be nice because with the larger mower deck, he can obviously raise it up, but he can get There's things faster, them. which would be nice. So we wouldn't be spending, you know, eight days a week mowing. We'd be able to do some other stuff too. So the problem, with the, the problem with the zero turn at that size deck is if you have any kind of side hill mm -hmm. uh, type mowing, when you get to the bottom of the hill where it joins, you, you, you end up with um, yes. uneven cuts and especially on side hills, very difficult to deal with the mower unless it's you know any kind of angle uh, it's not as effective that's exactly what i was saying and getting and getting in around trees and you know smaller smaller areas a five foot deck is really uh, you can't get into those smaller areas like you could with a like a you know a 50 a 50 inch deck or okay. you're thinking more like a 48 inch deck Tape. Well, I, I mean, I've got a 48 and it gets around fine. I mean, you can go to a 50 or a 52, but. Uh, okay. Well, why don't we do this so that um, then I can get some more information and we, instead of, I didn't get all of this until today. So we'll be able to, I'll put this on our next agenda. Then you will get the information in your packet and you'll have a little yeah. more information. You can look at what I'm looking at. Okay. It looks like Therese, I mean, just doing a quick little shop in here. Um, that those 48 inch ones, I mean, you can get a good one for like 3,500 bucks, four grand. From John Deere? Yep. All right. So we will do that. So then we'll just take a look at it and let's see. Um, maybe we'll end up with a couple of different options or something. And I can hash these questions oh, out with Richard and, and we will put it in your next packet. We still have time before. We still yeah. have time. I'm not going to be mowing anytime soon. No, I think there's a back. It's one of those things, just like everything else, because of COVID, there's a little bit of a delay. So that. But if you good. order it, if you order it quick before my boys go back to Pike, they can put it together for you. There you go. Mechanically, that will save me five hundred or two hundred, depending yeah. on what they're putting together. I but bet you, Dave, if you if you drop that off in front of Dave's yard, he'd have that thing put together in a week. <laughs> right. okay. And mowing his own lawn now. Yeah. The so, other thing is the the I'm not sure what kind of cl the clipping collection you're looking at, but I know that the most of the ones with the John Deere, and you get any kind of wet clippings in there, that thing plugs up so fast, you spend mm -hmm. half your time getting off and, and unplugging it. Okay. So unless it has its own uh, motor to move clippings up through, if it just comes off the side chute, uh, very ineffective if it's wet clippings. Okay, good to know. I'm making a, I'm making a note if it comes off side deck. Pogs. All right, excellent. Thank you. So we'll we'll look at it all and then give you some options in a couple of weeks. Um, the other thing is Dietrich. I would I would like I just I would ask how necessary it is to do the collection. Uh, returning those clippings to the ground is uh, is also sound. I know in some areas he has a couple areas where it just gets really thick and then he ends up having to rake it. So I think that was his, was the whole conversation about it. Mm. Um, so it's not everywhere he um, has that issue. There's a couple places where, um, and what he mows is no matter, it seems like where he gets there, it's, it does it. But I'll make a note, is bagging necessary? Question. I remember um, that being a specific part of the discussion. Early on, I think it was maybe when Greg was still here that not having a bagging system was a real issue. Yeah. So one of the, initial things that started us looking and then it's been a, you know, couldn't sell the ventrax so we didn't do it that thing yeah so all right that's fine we will sort all these things out and then um you know put on the next agenda that's no big deal we got time 
Um, the other thing was Dietry had given me a, an AARP opportunity came out, the AARP Community Challenge Grant. And um, so she, it's a $5,000 is the max. And I, and we don't have to have a match, but it looks better if you have a little something. And we felt within the budget, we could come up with the 10%, which is $500. And Dietry is looking to get um, a, a bike rack that would hold eight bikes to put down at the um, rec field, along with an adaptive swing set, which would be an adaptive swing seat for the swing set, which would be a, another step towards getting us at a more inclusive rec facility. And also looking at, um, and it's, if we have enough money to get some bench seatings, because right now there's no place for people to sit, whether they're maybe somebody there with their grandkids or a you know, mom with the kids, we don't have as much seating there out near the play structure. So this is a, again, it's a grant to AARP for $5,000. And we were saying to them that we could have some matching funds of $500 that we would take out of the budget, um, some savings um, within the park budget and the rec facility budget. Sounds good. I'm sure you make it work in the budget somehow. Yep. And then um, my question was normally our meetings are obviously every, you know, the second and fourth Mondays. I am not going to be here for the fourth Monday in April. So I was wondering if we could do back to back meetings in April, the 12th and the 19th. Am I allowed to vote against the 19th since it's my birthday? No. No. <laughs> you just just don't come. <laughs> no, Lindley. No. Nope. Make it fast. You just get extra comp time. That's right. I'm sick of getting extra. You guys got to come up with better birthday presents for me. It's always the same. <laughs> hey, we had one on January 11th, which was mine. So. So is that one month? Is if we, can we just do them back to back? Does anybody have a problem with that? And then we'll go back to our normal <laughs> schedule in May. Besides Lindley, does anybody else have a problem with that? Oh, I appreciate it. I'm going to be on vacation, and I could I do a meeting? Yes. Am I on vacation? Yes. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm fine with it. Lindley is. <laughs> so. I'm good. I'm good. Lindley apparently won't be here. Maybe we can make it a short one. That's right. That's what we'll do. Five minutes. That's my birthday present. There you go. We got to hurry up before we have to pay pay uh, Dave overtime here. That's I'm all done. That's it. <clears throat> all right. Anything else to come to the board this evening? Did I read somewhere about uh, making assignments of select board members to be liaisons to various committees, et cetera. Yeah, it's an idea. I saw, yeah. And I think I put uh, it in our manager's report and we could talk yeah. about it at the next meeting if you want. That, but. That's fine. I was just, be, it came up with regard to me and the um, planning commission. Planning commission and Lindley and Paul, isn't it, to the uh, dump? or the transfer station? Yeah. Well, her, yeah, her and Dave are gonna take on that. Oh, she and until Dave, we, okay. Until we I find just, somebody, which reminds me, I need to put that ad in the paper as well. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, All right, so I just wanna make sure that hits the agenda at some point. Yeah, and Paul does two rivers. So Paul's in. Okay. I'll that. put it on for next week or in two weeks, agenda discussion. Okay, I'll make sure I put that on. Thanks, Gene. And as the chair, you get everything else. So one week it might be deputy health commissioner. Next week it might be. Yeah, for what you asked for. <laughs> I know. Uh. Paul, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Chris should <laughs> run <the> shelter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm telling you, my, my time's really getting filled. So speaking of that, I'm going to get some kids in showers and get to bed. So. Option to adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Have a good night, guys.